grumpy anyway. Windrow's not grumpy. He's entitled. He's got. He's only got a third of his Daves to yell at. Of course, he's grumpy. And they're all in trouble. What happened the other two days? We had to leave. We had to leave two Daves behind because there weren't enough uh, players for the fly spell. Also, Hollis got them all high. Wait. A B C D E F G. Where's Wanderlust? Can you guys hear staff? Yep. 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 There was an alphabet. Wanderlust is bottom right. Oh, good. Yeah, she was flying like uh, Charlie in the Chocolate Factory, just farting along. And then we stopped in a not very ominous uh, floating rock. <laughs> Not are there are there non ominous flying rocks like? You played WoW, right? Yes, and every part of Outland was ominous. What about the nice part? Ominous, but it wasn't. It was nice. I remember when we were just dating, and I was still in uh, America. We would hold hand, virtual hands, and play in that area. I miss Pe Sanger Marsh. Pepper's Doors. Farm remembers. But anyway, Patrick, are we ready? Is everyone back? I don't hear Andy. But he might be muted. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was just muted because I was talking to Lee. All right. Are we live? We are live, buddy. Well, good evening and welcome, everyone, to Thursday Night Tomb of Annihilation with Dances with Kobolds. My name is Patrick. I will be the Dungeon Master for this evening. Joining me are... Oh, uh, that'd be me first. Uh, I'm Tara. I'll be playing Walker Bow, the Tabaxi Arcane Trickster. I'm Andy, playing Thorn, a Tabaxi Warladin. Warlock Paladin. Uh, my name is Chris. I'm playing Hollis, the rock and roll rock gnome and your favorite upcoming artist. Uh, I'm Ian, and I'll be playing Winthrop Q. Rutherford, Explorer Extraordinaire. I'm Stephanie, and I'm playing Beatrix Caspian Rutherford, Cav uh, uh, Cavalier Extraordinaire. And I am Brendan, and I'll be playing Valanth, a Celestial Sorcerer Beguiler. And we somehow lost two turtles. Two turtles are wandering in the woods. With your new ability to fly last week, you guys surprisingly left old grudges behind and flew towards Omu instead of going after the goblins who took your flail snail shell. Flying over top of the jungle allowed you to make great time and avoid many zombies and other creatures you saw below. You flew to the heart of Ubtau, a large rock floating, visible from Kir Sabal. Surprisingly, it turned out to be a moat. You landed atop it and floated down to a cave entrance to explore. Here you found the headquarters of Valindra Shadowmantle, an elf who claimed she was also investigating the Soulmonger. She found this floating office a respite from all the undead and lizards below, using her teleportation circle to bring materials from her home. She was very interested in the map you guys had, and your generosity in copying it for her probably saved your lives, as she turned out to be giving off powerful undead vibes that Thorn picked up. But she was from nice. She was very nice. She was very pleasant. Uh, from one of her many books of lore, she read to you the parable of how the nine spirit animals tricked the people of Omu into worshipping them as gods when Uptau abandoned Omu and its people. Leaving quickly after eating, you headed west, a direction you thought she would not expect you to go, as you were less than polite talking about her um, atop the moat still. At the edge of a clearing, you found a cart that had been upended and turned into a simple shelter. It turned out to be the previous expedition of the Yellow Banner, funded by the muse museum in Port Nyanzaru. No sign of the party was left other than the supply list and contract between the museum in Chie, their turtle guide. During Baca and Walker Bow's watch, a dog wandered into camp and whimpered that its owner was in trouble. After waking the party and following it, you found a recently deceased boy whose head had been covered in a sack filled with wasps. You burned the corpse and the dog bedded down with Walker and her goat for the rest of the night. Walker, as you slept, you dreamt. Uh-oh. You 
Dreamt you were in a confined space with soft walls. It felt like burlap against your paw, but your claws could not cut through it. Water begins to seep through. You now know you're in a sack that has been tossed into the ocean and is sinking. At this point, you also realize you're not alone in the bag. With you is some kind of bird, a venomous snake, and the dog that was sleeping at your side. But now its fur is bristling and it snarls viciously at you. The three of them leap and attack and tear you to shreds as the water fills the sack. You wake with a start as your goat has jumped on you and butted you into the head as your thrashing has disturbed it. The dog is nowhere to be seen. Does she Patting ground yourself, in her sleep? I suddenly don't like that dog. Patting Whoa. yourself down, everything is 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 still in its place where you left it, but you notice there is a patch of fur uh, along your uh, neck that has been removed. Are there any puncture marks? No puncture marks. Okay. Um. I am suitably freaked out. Wait a minute. We were going to say we have the ashes of its owner. Are they still there? I don't think I had them. I think I I I had the ashes. The ashes are still there. We said we were sorry. It's not like we did it. Like my god. <laughs> So, so the dog is gone. The dog is gone, and I am suitably freaked out. I am but good. We go don't wake somebody up. Um, we don't have to deal with the dog now. That's good. Do I know what the? Uh, do we know what the uh, patch of hair was likely taken for? This uh, is why I'm freaking out, guys. I'm losing. I'm missing fur. What the hell's going on? Uh, it's a dog. It give, bit give, you. Give me an Arcana check. Oh, okay. Right. So here's the thing about my that. Arcana. <laughs> Not everything is a magical entity in disguise with nefarious means. Should I try Narrator. that too, considering it is me? It yeah, you can, you can give it a try as well. Walker, you think back to some of the stories and tales uh, you've heard, and knowing that uh, you guys met a lich last night, you're, you're worried that it's something along those lines that may have taken something from you in order to be able to possibly scry or track something along those lines. Uh, though you've also heard, you know, more horrendous nice. uh, tales of what can happen if magical beings, you know, get a piece of you. But this also, you know, this kind of method doesn't necessarily track with what a lich does. It'd be, you know, some of the other fey entities you might have heard of. Are you sure you just didn't scratch it in your sleep? Just scratch the hair, you know, like there was a bug there. I just, I just kind of laid my ears back as I glare at him. <laughs> Might have to grow oh, a new oh. coat of fur. Like I am seriously tempted to shave myself right now, like head to toe, just to make sure. But yeah, that scrying thing—that's what really gives me a pause. Do we have anything that can protect against scrying? No. We already have pause. Um, I might. Level. Do not make me use no. this pause on you, boy. I don't have uh, dispel magic. Uh, not even you, just like this. Mm. You need I have counter spell, blank and we don't have that. If if I had uh, if I saw him casting scrying, I could counterspell it. But yeah, Dave, that's... the tinfoil. No. <laughs> Walker Bonus looks at Dave and just like, "Don't even try, bud." <laughs> There's a Dave, crinkly Dave, sound. Dave slowly retreats uh, and you know puts the puts the foil back in uh, back in his bag and puts it back on top of Wanderlust. Thank you, Dave. But we were nice to it. Well, why would it just leave instead of hang out with us? It may not have been specifically the the dog. The dog could have been serving something greater. I, I, I'm not saying it's not the dog. I'm just saying the possibility that it's just a servant and it, you know, did what it was being told to do. Or, uh, okay, so... Um, I mean, the dog doesn't have anything to do with it. For my favorite terrain, can I use uh, survival to track it with advantage? I was just going to ask if we could try tracking it, yeah. Yep, give me a survival check. Damn it. One could have been slightly higher. How you about do, now? You do find... Oh my god. 
Yes, we can hear you. Everybody welcome Lorne playing Baca, our tortle cleric. Uh, you do find some tracks. Uh, however, after about 20 feet, they just are no longer there. Like they vanish mid, mid thing and there's not like a tree there. It's just in the middle of a clearing. That is correct. Okay, hey. I'll look up. You see nothing. You know, it is morning. There's, you know, you're, you're in a fairly covered, you know, canopy near the clearing, but nothing, nothing catches your attention. So there's a perfectly logical explanation for this, and I think it has to do with convection currents. Now hear me out. No. Uh, Hollis immediately hauls his guitar out and plays it as loud as he can. That's an idea. Okay, so guys, like, do we want to try and keep tracking this dog, or do we want to try and keep going on? We can't. It just disappeared. Like, this trail is ended. Yeah, but they... So is this... Was part of your neck, hmm. like, shaved, or is there a big piece of skin torn off? Well, it's not punctured, because I asked if there was, like, puncture marks or bite marks, so it's like not that. So I'm assuming it's not torn tree. either. Well, it, it was it wasn't, you know, cleanly shaved off, but it, it was it was ripped out, but sure. you know, it didn't cut you or anything like that. But yeah, it was clearly Dagger. removed. So so someone almost like, you know, grabbed a like a pinch of fur and like sheared it off with a dagger as close to the skin as I could get kind of thing. Something like, like a, that. Like a sheep. Okay. I was sure remember, guys. This is not Do you remember cool. anything in your dreams? Um yeah, I I relay that, you know, I was drowning and I was with a dog and some other creatures and they were, you know, killing me as I was drowning. So, double death. But they were also that being killed. Weird. Yeah, but... Yeah. Sounds like a crappy situation. Was there Sounds a rock or brick in the sack, or...? Um... Was there? I don't recall one. Not that you recall. The only yeah. thing you recall were the other animals, but you know there was clearly enough weight to to make it sink. Mm -hmm. And you know, Eku comes up, and you know, uh, you can see her hand sort of glow with a, a mystical and arcane energy, and she, you know, says, "If anything can make you feel better, this will try." And she she casts a restoration spell on you, which. You know, you can feel like this arcane warmth surround you, but you don't feel anything change. And mm -hmm. she just says, hmm, there's probably no lasting effect on you. It doesn't look like you were cursed in any way, but it is an ill omen to say And we'll, we'll hand yeah, her uh, Bacchus ta uh, tankard as well. What? What? Or not Baca, Olo, Olo. <laughs> Oh yeah, Olo offers you a you know a morning uh, pick me up. Yeah, I am definitely going to be chugging that down. Should we should we vote on whether to leave uh, Walker Bow behind? Oh no 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 no! no. <laughs> you are the weakest link. We are There's not leaving this here. Like behind. <laughs> we need our good luck cat. Thank you. I thought Thord was the good luck cat. <laughs> I thought Curiosity killed a cat. Yes, uh, thus we have Walker Bow. Meow. Wait a minute. We're not fighting curiosity. I call this a blade <laughs> of cats. So, uh, what do you guys want to do with the rest of your morning? Is it, do you guys want to uh, do any foraging? Do you guys want to just pick up and take off? How are we I, good I, for I'm food? Gonna sit, I'm going to sit in a corner and cuddle peaches and rock back and forth. <laughs> until you, guys ready to still, move. you guys are plenty good for food because Baka hasn't had to use any serious spells the last while so he's been able to do sort of create food and water and things like that so you guys you guys are pretty good um you know eku you know warns the longer you guys stay out in the the jungle you know it's always wiser just to do some foraging and find you know any kind of food but she also suggests we can probably do that the next time you guys you know settle for a camp because she's certainly eager to leave as well let's keep going yeah. but um should we go just below the treetops, like go under the canopy so nobody flying will see us? <laughs> Might hit a lot of branches. Yeah, and if anything's in the canopy, it'll see us. <laughs> Wait, I just I, I, I just had a really, really gnarly idea. It's probably going to be voted down, but I'm still going to vote. Uh, I'm 
I'm still gonna put it out there. So this was a, a, a some sort of pops, a fake creature, some other thing living relatively close to the undead we were just um, with yesterday, right? The dog. You don't yeah. know about that. I Did mean, we leave you know, any of those it, hags alive? Well, how how close are we to that flying moat that we found Valinda on? We know that Valinda is some type of undead. You guys flew for a good hour, and you guys mm. flew westward, which was the direction away from where you guys had told her you were heading, just to make sure that you put some distance between you and her. Right. We right. can't That's... really worry about Gaspode right now. We should keep <laughs> well... going. <laughs> Oh, no, no, that's fine. I just thought maybe it might be a good, you know, enemy of my enemy, right? Like, I didn't realize we were that far away. I'd forgotten that part. So I was thinking, hey, if we're still relatively yeah. close, go back and be like, look, this kind of happened. I don't know if you can help. Uh, just figure you might want to know because there's something else in your territory kind of thing. But so we're too far away for that, so. Well, you, I mean, you could have to, you know, depending how you guys go, because on the map, um, let me move you guys over to it. You guys can all see it? Yep. So, so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm playing still on my phone, so I barely see it. There all we right. Go. So, you guys had, you know, gone to Heart of Uptau and then flew west. So, you guys are over about there right now. So you could head back, or you could just head, you know, straight south. We should just head straight south. That's uh, my are, best bet. Are you okay. on the map layer, um, Patrick? Okay. Yeah, that's I didn't see right? your, Yeah, okay, there's a pink. So that's okay. the heart of Uptau. Yeah. That's about where you guys were. And, of course, Omu is down there. Yeah. I, I'm perfectly fine with moving on. It's just if this was a big concern for everybody else, that was my idea. It's like, hey, we can go back and be like, look, enemy my enemy. There's something strange out there you might want to be aware of. Oh, uh, let's not tell her shit. Okay. Yeah. We already told her enough. I don't think I badmouthed her. I could go back and tell her. Nah. Well, All right. So with that, you guys quickly pack up, uh, you know, getting all your gear stowed. And you, you know, starting to get used to this, you guys lift off, fly through the canopy. You know, it's a, it's a light rain. Uh, can I get uh, Hollis and Valanth to roll me a d20, please? There we go. I think lower is good. That means something happens. I think that's awesome. We're going to die. I'm sorry. And... Who's playing meat grinder? Stephanie, All right. can you Hi. give me a d20 for the weather, please? Oh, 19. That's good. The, uh, you know, the morning mist clears off, and you guys are, uh, you know, looking at fairly blue skies as you uh, cross the sky and the land. Uh, as you are, you know, heading off, you start to hear the sounds of... Uh, stomping and crashing uh, coming in the jungle under the, the canopy and uh, give me a group perception check. Uh-oh. Does Pete just jump on my back? <laughs> Whoops, I rolled three times there by mistake. Uh, Walker and Winthrop uh, you guys can, every once in a while, through the tallest parts of the canopy, uh, you can see uh, shocks of white hair in the tops of heads uh, crest through the treetops. And it looks clearly like a group of frost giants that are tromping through the jungle. Oh, like our friend! Is yeah, one, these one might of them missing a horn? Like your friend, but uh, she warned you against... Uh, you know, the rest of the search parties that were out there looking for artists. So nobody's seen it except for Walker. So I'll catch her eye and be like, let's just keep going. And then uh, when yep, we're out of earshot, when, yep. Yep, yeah, Walker sees well. as well. When we're out of earshot, we'll stop everyone and tell them, back there, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys saw at least two heads. And from the sounds of it, there, there might have been a third one. What do you guys want to do? 
keep going, I, I would vote. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm all for letting I'm rampaging I, uh, Frost Giant fly, so yeah. Oh my god. Um, so that's really okay. Oh, I think Lauren's working again. And with that, you guys continue. You, you stop off for, you know, a, a simple, straightforward, uh, you know, lunch. Nothing, nothing fancy. You, you know, find just a clearing. Yeah, speak for yourself, peasants. Yeah, everybody else has their rations, and you know, Winthrop seems to have, you know, a nice hot meal prepared by Dave somehow in the middle of the air. It's a, it's a <laughs> talent. You're not going to share with me. Oh, oh Steph gets some. He's you, just that yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Dave, he's ready. Dave knows his place. <laughs> and with that, you guys keep flying and, you know, continue to make good time. And flying, you know, lower down, closer to the top of the canopy, you come across something you probably wouldn't have noticed had you been flying any higher. And you notice that a wooden vessel is caught high in the tree branches, broken up into three chunks. It resembles a ship, but there are differences that mark it clearly as not a seagoing vessel. It's an airship. Ooh. Do we is want is to it only three chunks? Is it the USS Constitution? No, it's, um... Oh, crap. What was the name of the one in Arcanum that crashes? Uh, the Zephyr? I, well, I remember that there was uh, something about uh, the Star Goddess. Yes. The name of an airship that crashed. Yes. Yes. All right, we're getting off track. I don't know. The no, name. no, that's that's the name of the ship that of the airship that we know has. All right, crashed. fine, but that presumably not the name of this thing. And <laughs> no, I think that is the name of this thing. Is what he's saying. Yeah. Oh, that's what on, I have in my notes. I've got to get uh, Valantha's yeah. character okay. in. Get her in. Hark, elves. Can you see? Yes. Yep. All right, so the lowest piece hanging is the stern. And so on this map, I mean, because we're going top down, it's obviously going up vertically. So the stern is the lowest piece hanging precariously by its rigging about 50 feet above ground. The middle section is about 15 feet higher than that. And the bow section is firmly wedged into a nest of branches another 10 feet above that. A weak voice calls out, Hello, can you help us? Yes, let's go help them. Uh, One second. Are we let's sure uh, take that? a look first. Uh, perception check? Well, I would like to incite that help. Oh, yes. Please. And I'll uh, look for hostiles that aren't them. And we All got right. baby Heidi Cat on the kitten cam. So, Aww. Winthrop, uh, you... Where, what are you wanting to check out? Are you checking out how the ship is hanging? Are you checking out things in the general vicinity? So I'm going to have my bow drawn. I'm going to make sure that they're all... Basically, I'll do a quick check to make sure they're all look like they're, you know, wounded and need our help. And then I'm going to check for hostiles and keep scanning while everyone goes down to help. All right. On first glance, uh, they appear to be... Uh, I mean, you can get a pretty clear look of the people in the... Uh, center area, and they look very weak. They, you know, they're, uh, they certainly appear that they've been there for some time and look kind of emaciated. Uh, Hollis and Baca, you both can clearly hear sort of desperation and weakness in their voices. You guys go, I'll cover you. I think they're genuine. I, I think they're genuine. All right. And I'll, uh, ready to action, any hostile that pops out, I'll pop it. Okay, as you, uh, you guys can move your tokens to, you know, where you want to uh, like land, it. acknowledging okay. that, uh, you know, it's, it is precarious, but you guys can fly, so you don't need to drop directly onto it. Yeah, they can uh, be hovering like an inch off the deck. Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, Winthrop, what you notice uh, down at the bottom of the tree and sort of wandering around, you notice uh, eight figures uh, that are all sort of wandering and, and shuffling about, clearly undead, you know, sniffing something, you know, sort of above them, but, you know, 
obviously being frustrated at not being able to climb. Okay, uh, I will drop down a little closer to everyone so they can hear me and be like, uh, there's some undead down there. Do you want me to go? Thorn can shoot some well, agonizing well, here's blasts. A here's a question. How far away are we from them right now? I can uh, get them from up here. From the center okay. section, you're 65 feet above them. Okay. 50 okay. feet above them from the stern, and then 75 feet above on the bow. How high do I need to be to be able to see all three of them, plus uh, the zombies? Or is there a way? Like, here, I guess? That high up, you know, there there would be, you know, some protective sort of cover from the canopy. But yeah, you'd be able to keep an eye on everything from that point, for sure. Okay, so it's that's where all... being, It's the beauty of you guys flying at this point instead of being on the ground. Yeah. Um, would I know what these things are? Um, in terms of in terms what kind of undead they are? Yeah. Uh, looking over the edge, they, they clearly look like ghouls. Okay, so ghouls. I know that... Hired ghouls! <laughs> <laughs> so I would know that, you know, I wouldn't have a chance to necessarily be able to destroy them outright, but I could possibly turn them away from me. Yeah, um, if, if need be. Yeah, I mean, at this point, they're not all that dangerous, but they are dangerous to the guys in this ship. And they could call more. Or yeah. start climbing. And uh, for the rest of you, as you, you know, sort of uh, land, you can all clearly see that uh, everybody on here um, is, you know, very weak. You can see, you know, sort of empty you know, food containers and crates, and it looks like they've long run out. And the weak voice calling to you, uh, she introduces your, herself as uh, Thassalandra, and she says she is the ship's captain. And, you know, she sort of weakly explains that they were, you know, flying uh, northward toward Port Nianzaru uh, about three, ten day ago and were attacked by Terra folk, and they destroyed the airship's um, balloon and crashed into this tree, and they've been stuck up here for, you know, that time since. They, a couple of people, the crew members, tried to sort of climb down and look for help, uh, including, you know, one of the, the young cabin boys, but they haven't uh, seen or heard anything from them since they left. And unfortunately, they've gotten to a point where everybody is sort of, you know, so weakened and dehydrated at this point that they find it too difficult to climb down to the ground and face any of the undead that are below them. So they're almost at the point where they're going to start swapping legs. Pretty much. I mean, or coming uh, down to the ground anyways. Yeah, I mean, Baka, if you want to give me a medicine check or anybody else, if they have, you know, uh, proficiency I in do. it. I do. How about that? Go for it. How about that? I don't know if I have medicine. I don't I do have, have medicine. I have, I have zero in medicine. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, Thorn, you're, you know, on the bow of the ship. And, you know, from your distance, you can tell they're clearly exhausted. And Baka, you, you know, can see they are probably, you know, if you were to give it a range of, you know, one to five, they're probably at the fourth level of exhaustion at this point. Okay, well, the first thing I would do, because these guys are fairly decent folk, is cast that. Careful, don't feed them too fast. You might hurt them. No, no, but the, the idea is, you know, I would also inform them, hey, the food isn't going to last, but you'd at least be able to, you know, fill your bellies and, you know, no longer be starving, but the as water you, will last. As you create this, uh, the deck tilts precipitously as, you know, okay. 45 pounds and 30 gallons of uh, water in a container, you know, really uh, are very, very dangerous. And hang on, let me... Oh, but, I didn't think of that. But at least none of us were touching the deck, right? None yes, but were. now we have to, like, all make mad grabs for these guys. So, uh, uh, yeah, unfortunately... Um, a 29 gallon full glass fish tank is 265 pounds. Yeah. So it's going to be higher than that. Yeah. So these two people down 
at the bottom just tip right off and start falling. I'll go for it. Grab one. I'll go for the other. Give me I will a, apologize immediately. Saves. Sorry, what saves? Give me a dexterity check to see if you can grab them. Uh, Walker, you are able to grab them. Oh, inspiration. Them. Or I have to do inspiration before, don't I? No, what kind of inspiration? Uh, don't we get one because we're playing for... Our... That's oh, yeah. Tuesdays. Extra life game, is it? No. Oh, it's not. Damn. It is not. I uh, drop um... him. I drop him like a buttery email. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, he mm -hmm. topples 65 feet to the ground and Damn it. lands with sort of a sick uh, thunk, and the ghouls just immediately tear into him and devour him. No! No time to save him with a healing spell? No, the ghouls, the ghouls were right at the bottom of this tree and just waiting for him. Yeah, I was going to try and with, make it with, with four level. levels of exhaustion um, and dropping 60 feet, that, yeah, he was, he was insta-dead. Yeah, shy. Oh, yeah. Baka! As I'm Whoa, they would have died without Baka anyway. I'm like hanging uh, this, I'm just like gripping one yeah. guy out of the arm, he under his arm. <laughs> uh, the, the captain, you know, just says, it's, you know, it it is it is tragic, but you know we the food is certainly going to come in handy. Uh, would you be able to get our passengers off the the stern so they could come over here and eat as well? Uh, sure. Is there anybody in the bow right now that you know of? No. I'll grab this one. Okay, and uh, so Don't drop them. I'm grabbing. Uh, um, yeah, I got the top guy. What do I need to do? Well, here's here's here's. I would suggest I... holding on to them while they feed, so they don't yeah. touch the deck. Is there any uh, is there any spare rope or anything near the bow where nobody is? Bow looks like the most stable. Do we just want to move everything and everybody up onto the bow? Yeah, let's try and stabilize us if we're going to be bringing over more people and letting them eat and stuff. The All bow's right. got the best footing. Okay, we can do that. Is it actually, or is it just a trick of the map? It might be a trick of the map. This is well, wind run a survival we check. I will guide you on this. That. What's guidance give? A D4. 24. Yeah, you guys clearly think the the bow is the most stable part of this. Uh, and so you guys start transporting and, and collecting the food and moving people over. Uh, and as you do so, you start to hear uh, grunting and uh, rustling through the trees. Ah, uh, hells. Le coming out. Leaping out of... Giant monkey. No more O'Grillians. Oh, no. man. I and want another oh. onto the boat. There are three of the God damn it. Why? Oh, that's a new combatant. Oh, I'm holding someone that I lost my ready to action. Yeah, you're not you're not firing any bows. Can we guess can these things? Oh, wait, wait were we float? Were I mean, we still gonna hold them while they ate, or are we going to move them specifically so we can let them go while they eat? No, we just picked them up and they just jumped on the deck. They just fell off. Oh, we, we haven't actually like transferred everyone over and set them to Aw oh, hells. No, you guys were just starting to. These guys uh... smelling the food and hearing movement and voices again, they all leap out. Uh, can I get everyone to roll me some initiatives, please? I am disengaging and flying oh, away. Hang on, let me clear this out. Oh, we lose two people, or almost lose two people. From 45 or 300 pounds of food, but two 600 pound apes do nothing? Uh, they land, uh, you know, generally a little more cautiously, and you guys had already righted most of uh, the deck, and I didn't say that nothing happened. Yeah, that's Why did you remind me soon? It's all your fault. We're flying. Yeah, but these poor people aren't. I mean, they're going to be soon. No, huh. that's falling with style. Oh man, they're zombies. We can't cook them up. Uh, they don't speak any languages, I'm guessing. Plus, they're dead. Things monkeys. need to speak languages. So, 
I need to understand something. So I'm so Thorn is essentially weightless. Can Thorn grab someone and bring them down? Oh, but on the ground there are zombies, so we're kind of yeah. On the ground there are ghouls, so ghouls, and in the trees there are gorillians. Great. We are boned. Oh, we're fine. You guys can fly. I, I have a plan. We can fly off. We can leave. <laughs> nope. No. Nope. Now, now you're singing my tune. Let's go. Well, first up is Beatrix, as the ghouls down below are feasting on uh, the fallen. Oh, okay. Member. I will can... grab this. Crew. I already have on this crew member, right? So I yep. will lift him up and put him on one of these tree things and tell him to hold on to the rope. Those are branches. Or, yeah. I'll move him, like, over here on the branches. He's been upgraded. upgraded to the branch manager. Now, uh -huh. these people have four levels of exhaustion, so you would be very concerned about their uh, ability oh. to hold on to anything at this point. I will yeah, the take guys out in the my... fine. I will, I will... Oh, wait. Uh, you think they're fine? They're, they're not going to fall while I'm there? I wouldn't go too far, but... We can probably take care of the two. It's it's the two in the midsection I'm really concerned about. Well, I'm concerned about all of them, of course. But... Don't worry about those two. I don't have anything. I have... All right, I'm going to... All right. You can fly. You've got all your movement. You've got 30 feet of flying speed. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So I'm in the air over here. I guess I'm just using my crossbow bolt because that's better than nothing. You know what? Yeah, I'm just going to dash. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And I'm going to give him the uh, uh, a come at me bro sort of look and pound my shield. Come Can't at me bro. bro. Come at me bro. And that's it. All right. Do you want to give me a performance or an intimidation check? Sure. Huh? Huh? Uh, looking right. tough. Yeah, you can you can see it. You know, it it you catch the attention of one of them. Thorn, you are up. You are currently in the bow of the ship. Yeah. With a giant four-armed beastie thumping its chest in front of you. So, I'm trying to figure out how... <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to picture this. So the boat obviously is very tippy. The people we're trying to rescue are incredibly weak. But I'm trying to... I mean... <clears throat> Oh. Can these gorillians essentially go wherever they want on this tree? Is there any point in my... Should I just grab someone and float above the trees and leave it at that, and so we all just try to get them away? Maybe I'll... You know what? I'm going to do that. That's because... a good idea. You can put them on Wanderlust. We're idiots. Oh, my God. Yeah. I so... forgot about Wanderlust. <laughs> oh, God. So I'm going to float... I'm just wondering if I can... Grab this person here, float, float off, and like get her to safety temporarily, sure, me, and then come back. Give me a strength check. Okay. So, is it my misunderstanding? We have like six remaining crew members here. Uh, Looks like five. Five. Okay. Can Wanderlust carry five people on her back? No. But, like, we can put, like, three on his back, and we all get, uh, grab the rest. Yeah, what I mean, about, you, guys, what you guys can, you know, for a short period, you guys can carry people. It's not like you could carry them all day. Uh, with an 11, uh, you don't get much lift. Uh, you know, you're, you're basically carrying dead weight because she's so heavy, so you're able to get a hold of her, but you're not able to get any movement off of her thorn. Okay, well... Good idea, you've though. Com you've communicated your idea to everybody else. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
Deepwalker Bo, you are currently uh, carrying Nar in your arms as you rescued him from falling off. Okay. Um, how sturdy does this like leftover ripped balloon look? Give me an investigation check. Uh... <laughs> it's it's looking fairly sturdy. You can see it's quite you know well wrapped around, and that's what's holding up some of the sections. So you think it would probably be able to, you know, it's it's been holding the weight of these people in various ways. So yeah, you uh -huh. think it's it's strong enough. Perfect. Okay. Uh, I obviously have to disengage, otherwise this thing's going to take a swing at me, right? Is it close uh, enough to swing? Technically, I would say you're probably five or ten feet underneath it, because we're looking vertically okay. at this point, because you had to fly down oh, okay. to, to grab Nar, so you're not right beside it. Oh, yeah, yeah, You're, yeah, I'm, you're, I'm you're under, underneath I'm it. Under. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to fly Nar over here. And set him down on the balloon, kind of like a hammock, and it's like just, just lie still, don't move. I'll come back when it's safe. Um, it, I'm assuming that's my action, or can I still try and get a pot shot off? Uh, that would be. That's uh, your movement. It's free action to let him go because you were already holding him. Yeah. Uh, so you, yeah, you would have you would be able to still get a pot shot in. All right, I am going to go for. I think that one will be in range. 80 feet? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm going to go for this one over here since uh, the length is all on our own there. Give her a wee bit of a hand. Uh, heavy crossbow. <laughs> you take Eat. aim and, yeah, you, your, uh, your crossbow bolt Wow. true. Yeah, That's no got to be a house rule to kill that's uh that's 19 because unfortunately there's no sneak attack because no one's in five feet of them that's still 19. that's mm -hmm. still double crit <laughs> and oh oh my god there's obviously two say, damn it with that uh with that first roll yeah that uh caught it off guard enough that, yeah i will say that uh knocked it uh, all the way to the ground so it's mm -hmm. gonna take a bunch more damage Oh, I didn't realize these are Gorillan Gorillan zombies. That makes uh, sense. Yeah. It, it, it smashes into the ground, but a second later you see it shake its head, groan, and start climbing back up the tree very quickly. Well, it's out of it for one round at least, hopefully. Yeah, that's all I do. <laughs> Great shot. Yay! Thank you. Winthrop. All what? right, so uh, I had grabbed onto this this passenger, this woman, I think. Man, I'm quite the flanderer. Uh, I will grab her Not and long. Uh, do the same thing as Deepwalker and drop her off. Still looks strong enough, right? It it stretches, but it's def it's holding. Oh well, it's, it's holding. Okay, and I'm going to start firing into the melee to distract uh, Gorillionaire 1. Gorillionaire? Haha. <laughs> so this will be my first shot. Uh, that is a hit. Okay. That's the second uh, bow right from the thing. That's a hit, so that's a D8. Uh, and um, I can't remember. Do I get my second attack? Yes, you do. All right. Another hit. Yeah, you land three solid arrows inside this, you know, gigantic creature. Just, <laughs> but it barely takes any notice of it. As it, it, you know, its rotting flesh just kind of peels off as you strike it. And It'll I have a. Season. I have a little extra movement because it's my first round in combat. So I moved her that much, then back. So it's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 40. I'll move up here. And done. Give me a perception check. Ooh. 
Oh, oh, I closed my character sheet. One sec. I gotta go, guys. Sorry. Okay. Not a problem. All right. I was gonna turn on dead. Holy crap! I did it too. I'll well, try it. in a different way. Wow. You hear you waste all the crits. Uh, the sound of chittering and what sounds like uh, flapping wings coming in. Oh, oh God. No. Guys, we gotta go. Yep, gra- grab him and go. Ay, ay, ay. Hollis. Okay, big people, you can grab uh, these guys better than I can. And I'm gonna go to here and try uh, popping off one of my, my big attempts here and uh, go for fear against both of these guys. All right, what's your spell DC? Uh, my spell DC is 14, and I believe fear is a wisdom save. Doesn't matter, they both fail miserably. Great, so they are now running away from me. So if you guys want to grab and go, uh, now's the time. All right, let's do this. Let's grab them and go. Wanderlust, Wanderlust to me. Volanth. Uh, someone and kind of stole, uh, stole my thunder uh, there. Sorry. I was going to do basically the same thing. Oh, sorry. Uh, no, uh, I was going to enemies abound them. Um, I don't see anything. Like, is anybody else still be picked up? There's one on the stern. Oh, There's yeah. There's one next to Gorillion Air One. Yeah, yeah where got, Baka got, is, but Baka, Baka is no longer there. So it's sort of by Beatrix now. Baka live at the CBC. <laughs> I will dash to here. Okay. And then I guess next turn, because I, I can't grab him yet, can I? You can grab him, but you wouldn't be able to move with them. All right, I will grab onto this person then. Okay, so we'll give, you'll give a strength check next round. With that, the zombies go, and looking at this tiny creature in a black suit with a floating parasol, their their faces just drop and their eyes are filled with panic and they both turn and just scarper off into the trees. So what are the flying monkeys going to do to us? You'll find out in a second. Why why are they scared? Because Hollis cast fear. Right! I'm just that intimidating Uh, guy. He's so terrifying they went through a tree like a Looney Tunes cartoon. Oh, no, for the way you described him, like, you know, the, the thing with the parasol, I thought it was something about his overall shape. I completely did not connect the spell, Derp. Seriously, if a man, if a tiny man with a suit and a floating parasol just flew up to you, you would run, too. True. Uh, how tiny? Now, they are going to one. be able to... Yeah, I'll just... Yeah, they just run. I'm not even going to say they, they run off to attack anybody else. Yeah, they bolt and disappear into the trees. With that, you hear more chomping and eating going on underneath you. Beatrix. All right, so... Uh, okay, so Volanthi has the guy that was next to me. Uh, all right. It, so it's only the guy, a guy on the stern? Yes. All right, so I'm going to dash back and grab him. Okay. And I'm so strong, I can do this. Oh, do you even lift, bro? And that's it. All right. <clears throat> Thorn, give me a strength check. Indeed, same thing. Um, gee, oh, strength. Strength. Oh, man. I'm having trouble here, people. Uh... I was going to say you can do it with advantage because you, you know, you braced yourself and you got this. So, yeah, you're able to. And she's holding on to me, too. So, yeah. So it's, you know, half movement. So you've got 15 feet. All right. Um, Where are we? Where are we trying to get these people? Just to safety or to uh, our transportation? Wanderlust. Wanderlust. And then we're getting the fuck out. Yeah. So you guys, you're just trying to basically fly upwards. But, um, yeah, I mean. With that, Deepwalker Bow. Uh, I'm going to 
you know, reach down and hopefully swoop this other guy back on up. Okay, you grab on. Give me a strength check. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, yes! Oh, Walker Bo rolling on fire tonight. Yeah, you you get your your arms around, you, you get your claws in, and you just shoot upwards. Uh, so you're able to move almost your full feet. So you, you are above the tree line. And as you are doing so, uh, you see what appears to be just swarms of flying monkeys flying towards you. The but food. These, they also appear like they're like, it looks like there's bandages or other things that are, are floating off them and they, they're flying a little sort of herky-jerky, so they look like they might be undead as well. Oh, hells. Oh, God. I am not Dorothy. Winthrop. <laughs> this jungle sucks. It does. Why did I say we should come here? This is all your fault, Winthrop. You're dead Never dying. Is. Nothing's ever been my fault. Okay, so I'm going to grab her. Um, uh, strength check. Good enough? That's good enough. Yep, you're able to get a good purchase and, and lift uh, Radas off as well. And, and as we lift off, I want to slice this rope that's next to me and try and drop this uh, bit. I'm hoping that as it breaks, uh, the main part of the lower section will crush those uh, ghouls. All right, give me uh, an attack. Uh, is piercing okay? Uh, nope, it'll have to be slashing. I don't if you're, have if you're trying no, to cut. Never mind. I don't you have don't, slashing. I only have piercing. You have, you a, have short a dagger sword. or anything? You have a short sword. It comes with the ranger. Yeah, short sword's piercing. Isn't it also slashing? No, nothing nope. is two damage types in 5e. Oh. Nope, nope I've got bludgeoning, master. piercing, and piercing. So, nothing. I take her up then. Yeah, okay. same here. All piercing. No, you know what? It's a sword. It's got a sharp edge. Take a swing. Thank you. That's that's a little too much. Uh, yeah, you you managed to hit, so roll damage. You oh, you might not button. be so uh, generous with my rapier, but there a short sword does seem like it. <laughs> yeah, rapier is different than a Definitely short sword. Pointy. Short sword would at least have that edge. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, with four damage, you, you don't get a clean uh, cut through of it. it. It definitely starts to unravel, and uh, the back you know part of the stern uh, and the canopy sort of fall away. Uh, Beatrix, give me a quick strength check as, All right. as uh, Falx uh, starts slipping away. She already grabbed him on her uh, initiative, remember? Yeah, but now it's uh, collapsing underneath. She didn't actually give me a strength check to see if she's holding on. That is more than enough. You are you are able to keep hold of uh, Falks. Well, that's lucky. Hollis. Yeah. Uh, okay, so everyone's got a partner. Uh, everyone's <laughs> dance card is nice and full. Um, <laughs> and I see no. Let's uh, yeah, let's 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 square dance on out of here, uh, folks. And uh, I'm going to uh, fly. Hmm. They're coming in from the northwest. Or the, sorry, I haven't scrolled all the way out. Are they coming in from the northwest or all directions? Uh, you can hear them above you in the canopy. You can't see where they are right now. Once you fly up, you can see that, yeah, they're coming in from the northwest. Okay, southeast, folks. Um, I say to the captain, there wasn't anything valuable on this ship, was there? No, no, anything is gone in the crash. Okay, let's go. Let's skedaddle. Thank God the chest wasn't in the back section. No, no, Ian, chests are always on the front. The back section is something totally different. Yeah. Oh. All right, with that, it is the swarm's turn. And since Deep Walker was one of the people above the canopy, and the other one was Hollis. They start to engulf them. So. Oh, hells. Oh, shiza. I should have dodged. That is going after you, and it misses Walker, and the one what? on Hollis, that swarm. Mummies. 
that one does hit. Uh, you take 15 piercing damage as all these uh, little flying monkeys just swarm <laughs> around and bite and nibble. And give me a constitution save, please. Oh, God, it hurts. So 15. Uh, brings me down to 24. Uh, okay. No mummy rot. Yes. Yeah, you can feel like the skin around where they bit you is... Uh, just ignore that. I don't know why that fired off. Uh, you can feel, you know, just how awful and sort of nasty their teeth is, but you don't feel like it got any purchase on you. And yeah, you don't feel uh, weakened in any way. Valanth. Oh, All right. Um, here we go. Negative one strength mod. You can do it. Put your back into it. Knees, not back. I mean, neither, because I'm flying. Put well, that old lady's wings into it. Uh, that is enough to start getting them off the ground. You get them about half your speed up in the air. And if I dash, can I get them another half my speed? Yep. So yeah, you get up over top of the canopy, and at this point, yeah, you can see Hollis and Walker Bow are, you know, surrounded by these uh, swarming, you know, flying monkey creatures. All right. Uh, yeah, that's my turn. Actually, how hurt is does Hollis look? Hollis uh, doesn't look too badly hurt. I mean, from what you can see, but I mean, clearly he's being, you know, swamped and swarmed. So you you think it's not good. Twenty four out of thirty nine. I'm fine for now. In two rounds, I won't be. Let's uh, let's go ahead and give you a healing word anyway. I'm not going to say no. Better safe than sorry. If they Hooray. Crit. And Beatrix. All right. Um. Any, any, anyone else need any help? Nope. You guys have got hands on everybody who needs to be carried out. You're currently heading up to the the top of the canopy, and you, as you're moving, you can uh, see. You know, again, Walker Bow and Hollis being surrounded by these flying creatures. All right, what I want to do is, are have we packed up everyone on Wanderlust or no? No, you, uh, there's nobody's on Wanderlust yet. Uh, Hollis was heading towards there, as was, uh, you know, Thorn, but nobody's gotten there yet. You guys have just gotten to the tops of the trees, so everyone's arms are still full of people. All right, I will... Go drop them off on Wanderlust, and then go back to brandishing my weapon to try and beat the swarms off of them. Okay, yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you fly up. You can basically drop them on Wanderlust. You guys figure you can probably get two or three of them on Wanderlust pretty easily. Uh, and so, yeah, so you are freed up, and you can swing away. All right. And I don't know why, but Beatrix and the ghoul switched places in the tracker. Those are both hits. Yeah, with a couple of great slashes, uh, you managed to knock a couple of these, what you can tell up closer, you know, they look like flying monkeys that have been sort of mummified. And, you know, as you slice through them, they almost just sort of into dust. There's no you know, sort of ichor or life left in them. And they tumble down mouth. to the ground. I cover my mouth. <laughs> oh, this stage is getting worse. All right, Deepwalker Bow, you've got somebody in your arms that you are floating up with. What would you like to do? Uh, Wanderla still has room for one more. Uh, you figure one or two more. Okay. Is... Well, I'm going to, um, I'm still surrounded, so I'll have to disengage yep. as a bonus action. Yep. Okay, I will disengage, drop my my new buddy on Wanderlust, and turn around and take a shot at the, the mummy monkeys. Okay, the ones that were around you or the ones around Hollis? The ones around Hollis, because the ones around me aren't threatening anyone right now. That's right. It's, what the hell is going on? Good lord. I'm not complaining, but still. Now those oh. ones that that one does get the the, the sneak the sneaky sneaky sneaky. Sure does. Yay. 
Yeah, and with that, you know, your your one crossbow bolt just sort of powers through and <laughs> and another, you know, three of those, you know, who are in the swarm are there and that swarm is is it just sort of scatters and, and dissipates in the air. Looks like getting shorn was good for Walker Bow. That new haircut suits him. <laughs> well, thank y'all. Uh, yeah, that's it. Thorn, you're able to carry uh, okay. your person up and okay. deposit it on uh, Wanderlust as well. And Wanderlust drops a couple of feet, but is is still holding in the air. So there is just <laughs> the one swarm that is left. What would you like to do? Um, can I get in position and just cast uh, Agonizing Blast? Oh yeah, you you guys are flying. That's the beauty of flying. Yep, I'm just trying to see what I'm huh, what what I'm shooting at. I'm just trying to get oriented here. Um, yeah. So wait. So what happened to those zombie mummy monkeys? Oh, they're still on there. It got moved off the map. Hang on, I'll bring them back. Uh, okay. That's what I thought I was. They were so afraid of our, uh, yeah, our yeah, little exactly. friend. He's like apparently just the most intimidating thing ever. <laughs> um, so they were over there. So yeah, you, you're able to, you know, okay. float around and line up a shot. I think that I get... just hits. Okay. I think. Do I get two of these? I think I do because I'm fifth level. Yeah, you should. All right. Yeah. And I think they're both separate attacks. So there we go. Both hit. All right. Um, 1d10 plus should be my... Um, did that do that right? 1d10 plus. Yeah. All right. So that's one and then another. Yeah. And with that, I mean, parts of the swarm, you can hear just the sort of cracking and crumbling of bones and, and things as they as the force beam hits it. And, and the swarm is almost cut in half as you know some of these small bodies just start tumbling down to the ground. Excellent. Winthrop, you've got somebody in your arms, and as you float up, it clearly looks like Wanderlust is a little overburdened. So give me a strength check to see if you can keep your firm grasp on this person. All right. Keep my firm grasp on this young lady. Got it. Yeah, and you've got – you'll have you – have, I'll give you advantage on this because you – you were able to see other people doing it, so you're able to ready yourself. And yeah, you're able to hold on, and you're still able to fly and, and keep moving. Uh, but I'm going to say you're unable to attack because your arms are full. Yeah, got it. Um, I'm going to say this is what happens when you trust dogs that talk. The dog didn't talk. The dog did talk. No, Baka talked to the dog. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. this is speak what happens when, when you talk to dogs. Man talks dog. <laughs> Turtle talks, dog. Hollis. Uh, okay, so Hollis is, you know, kind of surprised that the monkeys have left him. He's like, aha! Hollis, H Hollis Valentine, enemy of undead monkeys everywhere. Um, and then he... Uh, uh, so, so the other monkeys are, looks like, uh, 35, 40 feet away from me? Yeah, and I mean, again, you're flying, you're, you're unencumbered, so you'd be able to basically do like Thorn and move around to wherever you want and get a clear shot at them. Okay. Um, all right, I'll move to about there. That's within 25 feet. Um, and uh, I'll say... Um, I'll say... Um, zombie, zombie monkeys... More like zombie wannabe beetles. No? Nobody? Mm -mm. I, it, it's kind of a bad joke, but I got the reference. <sighs> Look, it's the closest rock and roll reference joke I can make, okay? Yeah, one of the, one of the, the sort of monkeys, you can just see the top of the head just... <laughs> <laughs> blows right off and it, it spirals and spins its way down to the ground so this the swarm is is down to about half of its size i so can't they, believe you make it. a reference to the monkeys like hey hey you were the monkeys something oh well that's what i was trying to do yeah oh, i thought you think the beetles all right and with that <sighs> they're the uh, wannabe beetles uh, never mind yeah uh the rest of the swarm 
does swing back towards you and they are going to attack. This and is what they, happens when I put myself in harm's way? And you take another 12 piercing damage. And Come give on. me another constitutions. Actually, uh, I think if you make it once, you might. Yeah, you're you're fine because you've already made it once. Okay. And so yeah, so another twelve piercing is. Uh, let's see. Yep, and I'm below half. So. No, nope, that is going to be. Sorry, that is just going to be six piercing. It gets cut in half because they're half the size. Ah, I'm not below half. That's a scary little monster. Valanth. I'm going to try and kill it. I will use, uh, I'm going to cast Guiding Bolt at second level on Swarm 2. Swarm 1 just buggered off, right? Yeah. Okay. I think they got tied together when I was moving it, so it just got moved right off the map. Oh, whoops. You hear Valant speaking a language you do not understand. <laughs> it's a strange <laughs> blasphemous tongue. I don't like the look of that repeating ass. Does a 13 hit? It does hit. And with that, uh, just this white sort of blinding light surrounds you, Hollis, and you're used to being bathed in the spotlight, so it feels feels good. And when you open your eyes again, uh, there's nothing but little dust motes floating in the air around you. You guys have solved my monkey puzzle. Yay! Woo! And you are able to... Uh, fly this group of people, uh, lay them down on the ground. Uh, Baka creates sort of, you know, more food and water for them in a more safe environment. And so, you know, they're able to, you know, barely take a drink and, and, and have some food, but they're still in very, very bad shape. Uh, and the captain tells you that about a, you know, a, a, a day or so south, there was some kind of village or encampment. Um, I don't, know what sort of creatures it was, but it, it looked like a some sort of giant, maybe a frog mud hut or temple that was built, so we might be able to find some safety there. Did do, do we want to escort them? Well, it's on our way. We might as well. Yeah, at this point, you don't think they could walk. I mean, right. at, at, at four levels of exhaustion, uh, they are in really, really poor shape. So we'll get out uh, every bit of rope, and we'll employ Dave, myself, and anyone else with survival to tie up a bunch of harnesses so we can kind of hook them up on our back while we fly and have our hands free. All right, everybody, uh, give me a group uh, give me a group survival check for that. Uh-oh. Oh, Yay, Damn. they screwed up. Uh -oh. oh yeah, uh -oh. yeah no. You guys easily are, you know, more than more than half. You you know easily pass that. So yeah, you guys are easily able to between you, you know, distribute the weight and figure out you know exactly how you can harness everybody up and and get them all moving. And so you're you're not moving as as quickly as you were through the air, but you are still you know flying fairly decently. Um, and, you know, they, they tell you a little bit more and say that, you know, they were basically carrying supplies. Uh, but, you know, when the gondola broke, you know, they lost most everything. They were able to catch rainwater in, in buckets for a little while. But, you know, their food ran out a good six days ago. And so they've really been, you know, in a bad way. And they're, they're incredibly thankful. Uh, and, you know, they you know, promise to repay and reward you guys any way they can. And with that, uh, let's take a five minute bathroom break and we'll come back. Okie dokie, Soaky Spokey. <laughs> All right.
so quiet. Very, very quiet. <laughs> are I we hunting rabbits? I was going to say, are we hunting rabbits? <laughs> It's the quiet before the horrible zombie ape storm. Uh, this is what I was going to do to the zombie ape, by the way. It's going to make them rip themselves uh, apart. Hey, it well, was a, it was nearly a zombie beholder. Oh. Wow. My reaction would have been weird. the same. What? How close were we to like crossing into that like next tier of difficulty? Oh, very close. I mean, that's the thing. You're in the jungle, like with the random encounters, you guys can hit anything like that almost any time. Like, I mean, like running into Valindra, if you guys were, you know, stupid enough to start a fight, she's way, way above your level. So there's that, you know, there's there's still uh, you know, dinosaurs and the frost giants that you guys, you know, you have a choice of running into since you're flying, but had you been on the ground, you'd have had a lot less, you know, opportunity to escape. And this is why going to Kirsabal is the answer. To, it, 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 it is the cheat code through Tomb of Annihilation. Only through parts of it. I'll take it. I like Hollis. I don't want to lose Hollis. As long as we've got uh, this fly thing, you can always just chicken out and abandon your colleagues. Yeah, that's true. Don't get my ideas. Isn't, isn't that Hollis's flaw? Or no, it's just something along those lines. It's not that he'll uh, my, my, my My flaw is that I'm, you know, no matter how hard I try, I, I'm... I end up being unreliable. Basically, Hollis at one point will decide to just wander off and do his own thing. Mm -hmm. I just haven't decided when that's going to be yet. Back, back. Yeah, there's the flaw. Despite my best efforts, I'm unreliable to my friends. So I'll figure yeah, out. Yeah, I that probably is. need to like fill out all that roleplay information for Valant at some point. <laughs> Winthrop is just a colonialist. It's an easy thing to roleplay. I should write it all down though. So is uh, is Winthrop the very model of a modern major general? Yes, he knows both damn it, I know this bit. Fuck. He's familiar with species, animal, vegetable, and mineral? Yes. That was actually part of him when I was designing the character, was that song. Mixed with Indiana Jones, the brother from Mummy, from the Mummy, and... Um, oh, who was the third one? I made a picture. I miss old uh, Horde of the Dragon Queen, Winthrop. Which one was that? The one that stabbed his friends. Yeah, he was douchey. This is a much more fun Winthrop. Oh, he also fell for... Uh, that was an item, right? Yeah. Also... You oh, wait. Also no. Yes, I did. I, now I remember, yeah. He was like an old friend of uh, Lorne and, and uh, Steph's replacement characters' families. Or no, Lorne... And Steph's replacement character, that family, the the Keensites. Oh yes, yes, yes. Now I remember. Here was the. Uh, oh wait. Oh, this isn't working for me. One second. This was the picture that I did for Winthrop when I was designing him, and I had also um, the the song on mind. Oh, that's how you drag and drop. <clears throat> Where is the party exactly? Like, what what represents the party on the map? 
you guys just were there. That's where you found the wreck of the star goddess. And so you're flying southwards. So you're about there right now. Oh, the, the party doesn't have like a token to represent them? I'm looking for yeah. one right now. Where's the torch? That's a tiny torch. Oh, one sec. I shut my water off. Fish tangled to let. And I can use a torch. We are, but it's tiny. I we can't adjust the size. Only Patrick can. Yeah, I'm seeing if I have anything else that uh, works better. We can yeah. drop tokens. Ah! Oh God, that's, that's a giant awesome. flame skull. Yeah, please tell me there's no like seventy five foot flame skulls in this in this module. That's not feet. That's miles. I'm I'm counting it based on squares. Like each square is like a ten mile hexagon. Yeah, that's why that's why you travel that's why you travel one hex a day if you're not flying. Even flying, I've been speeding you guys up because uh, you guys are at a point where we should be getting you to Omu pretty quickly. And that's why I mean, like, on the, uh, you travel a lot faster by boats as well. So that's why you guys have actually made very good time, because you went down the river in a boat, and now you're flying. We're on Bo a boat. Are Both we are fluids. I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. Don't know. Yeah, especially with the news he was in recently. I think about you every night and day. Ah! Why? No. Bad. Why? Bad, Ian. Bad. Why? Oh, have you not? Have you not seen the news about him recently, Ian? No, I have not. He's What's probably going? not. It, it's the equivalent of making a Bill Cosby joke now, or a Bill Cosby reference. Oh, oh. And not a sexual assault reference, like a slow Cosby. In Canada, we suck, we call a slow Cosby love. What? Why? Why? Uh -huh. It's a South Park quote. Why? Sorry, I thought you guys Why? knew it. Oh God, that's horrifying. You looked it up. Uh, I I I looked up his name, and that's the first thing that came up. A link. Uh, well, it's, you know, like, Google News showing... Are we streaming? Story. Can we talk about yeah. it? Uh, we'll say, I can't, about remember. It. I can't remember who sang the song, so I'm trying to cover my embarrassment. It got quiet. Yes, well, let's... We're, we're, we're trying to figure out how to talk about this. What are we let's talking not about? Talking about this. Let's, let's not... not. <laughs> Yeah. No. If you're curious, I'm, I'm, I'm tapping the X square in the center yeah. of the table. Yeah, there yeah. we go. X card. It's not. Is everybody back? Yep. Uh, I'm going to go grab a oh, yeah. cider and I'll be right back. It'll take me 30 seconds. Dilly, I've, got dilly. A, I've got like an orange mango breezer thing going on here. It's interesting. Is that why you're rolling so well? <laughs> I'm going to say yes. Time. All right, everybody back? Uh, they, I think they'll be back in a couple minutes. Minutes? Who? Yep, back. Is anybody not back? Speak now. <laughs> or forever yeah. hold your All those who can't hear me, speak up. Yeah, huh? We can't hear you. 
I think, I think that's so. everybody accounted for. Sounds like we're all here. So you guys keep flying over the jungle, and ahead of you, you see an opening uh, in the canopy, and you see a small lake surrounded by reed huts. Ferns and lily pads. Rising up from a flat island in the middle of the lake is a 60-foot tall shrine made of painted mud bricks shaped in the likeness of a giant frog. Let me move you guys in for a second. Can everybody see? Yep. 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 Stairs climb from the lake shore to an open doorway carved into the frog's fat belly. Patrolling the shrine's perimeter are several small frog-like humanoids with bright orange skin and short bows. As they see you fly over top, you can see them all sort of arch back and, uh, you know, rear back with their weapons, but none of them fire at this point. Uh, and the captain and the rest of the sort of group to say, this this is the, the place we saw it. It looks like it might be at least habitable. Maybe they can help us. Uh, and I say to the sure. captain, "Sure, they're uh, friendly. <laughs> we'll we'll check this out first. We've had bad experiences with mm -hmm. frog people." And the other thing you see uh, as you're flying over and from that height is you can see the surrounding area. There are just hordes of undead that seem to be caught in what looks like a maze that surrounds this place. So they're pressed up against the outside wall, and you can see that they have you know, arrows sort of stuck out of them, but, you know, they're, they're clearly sort of surrounding uh, this place. And, you know, well, it looks like a lot of battles have gone on. It looks like it's it's sort of been an even fight at this point. Okay. Um, so, uh, let's, hmm? how close are we? Are we within 120 feet of the uh, uh, frogmen? You're, yeah, you're, you're flying over top. So yeah, you'd be, you, you know, you're probably a good 60 feet in the air. So, you know, nothing crazy over the ground at this point. I okay. will point to the one that looks in charge and I will use the message spell or cantrip and say, we are friendly. Uh, may we land, we mean you no harm. Okay, do they automatically understand? Uh, do they, no, it's common. Uh, you can see, you know, one of the orange ones that's in front of the temple, you see their, their heads kind of shaken and they look up, but you know, you, you don't get any response back other than just sort of a, a croaking language that doesn't make any sense to you. Okay. Um, Hollis is going to, uh, fly very conspicuously to the gate. I'm guessing that this is a gate, or at least the entrance to the maze. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to fly to the entrance, and I'm going to uh, sort of slowly lower myself uh, at the entrance. So not like right in, but like I, I'm at your door. And uh, I'm going to sort of hold my hands out, and I'm going to say, greetings, do any of you speak common? I'll cover him from here. Okay, if you yeah. want to attack him, I'll put an arrow through his head. No, oh, and four of these green-skinned uh, grungs, you know, emerge from sort of the nearby hovels that you can see, and they sort of look at you, and they've all got spears, but none of them sort of move to attack. They they all sort of, you know, turn their head and, and just kind of... And you can tell they're speaking to you, but you you can't understand the language that they're speaking. Are they speaking a type of Choltian? They are speaking Grung. Uh, does anyone know Grung? No, uh, just Elven. So. Um, I'm one level away from knowing every language. Uh, I try that again in Gnomish. Same response. Give me a persuasion check. Okay. Uh, and I don't know what that sound everybody's hearing from my, uh, my microphone is, but it's not a tiny helicopter. Maybe it's my air conditioner or CPU fan? I'm not hearing anything. It might be, yeah. 
But we'll both walk, uh, yeah, us three hear it. Okay, yeah, they they continue to look at you. They don't do anything menacing. And, you know, they, they speak to you sort of again, and they, they look at the rest of the group and... Oh, um, we can fly down and try uh, Chalton. Go for it. Please do. Do you green fellows speak oh Chalton? Uh, and <sighs> as as you speak that, you can you can see one of them his his eyes sort of get wide and and he turns and croaks and just kind of bellows across the water. And coming out of the temple, you now see a red skinned uh, grung. And with that, uh, you hear the grung, you know, sort of croak out something. And you hear uh, this one grung on the platform. And she responds to you in Chelton and she says, it is so nice to hear the old tongue again. Please, uh, you, you all look like good, strong warriors. Um, you know, please, please come and meet the king. Croc would be proud to meet such strong, brave looking warriors flying through the air. So more quietly to the rest of the party. Oh, they're civilized. Good. You don't even need to be quiet. You just need to speak in common. We'll see about That's that. That's true. Sorry. Well, not common, Chilton. No, no uh, like if he wants uh, to be subtle. Yeah. Oh, uh, yes. I'm like, honey, stop being racist. What? They're speaking our language, dear. Let's go. Well, my language. Yep. And so you guys, you guys fly over, and you know, as you go towards the temple, uh, again, this uh, red grung, you know, just says, "I am Croc, and I would, you know, welcome you to uh, our." Our temple and in, in shrine here in Dungurlang. Uh, we have the pleasure of being under the great King Groak. And, you know, I will uh, lead you inside and, and make introductions uh, shortly. Um, who, uh, may I say, is, is coming to see him? Winthrop Q. Rutherford of the, uh, Ian is forgetting the name of the city right now, Port Nyon Czar Rutherfords. And uh, history check to see if I have any idea of that name or these people. Nope, doesn't sound uh, familiar to you at all. Has a nice provincial ring to it, though. Sorry, what's the name of the Grung Village? Dungra Lung. Okay, got it. And so, yeah, I mean, you can, you know, you can see that this is, you know, clearly a, a fairly nice place that is, you know, at the same time surrounded by, you know, this giant 15-foot maze that you guys flew over. Uh, and, you know, with that, Croak, or Croak, uh, brings you inside, and you can see the interior of this shrine. Can you guys all see inside? As soon as we enter it, yes. Now we can't. I can see. I'm inside. Whoa, I just ran up forward somehow. Yeah, I can see inside. Yeah, I'm in like a wall or something. Okay, is well, Patrick trying, trying to put us in and we're all just... He just disabled dynamic lighting. Yeah, I was seeing, and now I can't. I don't, I don't see Beatrice at all, or Beatrix at all. Beatrix is like lost in some dynamic lighting somewhere, probably. I was like right there, but or then you I actually ran moved forward. her to another layer. Did you move her to the GM layer? Maybe I did not. I moved again. Yeah, I'm just shuffling you guys around, trying to find Beatrix. 
Can you see Lost anything, Steph? in space. I can't see anything. If she can't see anything, then she's not in the middle. Oh, did you guys see the trailer uh, what you for the new Lost the in Space? Nope. Nope. It looks good. It's on Netflix. You could just drop a second Beatrix token. That's what I'm doing. I cannot find her. Are these grung really this small, or are we just, like, huge? No, like, he's got They're small. put in uh, four size, so we're medium. Well, actually, Hollis are... should be the same size, because Hollis is a small creature. I'm not that small. These guys small. are tiny. You're a, you're a small creature. Oh, I'm there's small. Beatrix. She's tiny now. I can't oh my see God. me. Can, you gotta move us. Make sure token has you vision. Up in. Yeah, Hollis, you're a, you're a halfling. You're or a gnome, rather. You're small. You should be able to see now, Stephanie. I can see now. I'm just tiny. That's okay. You shouldn't have drank out of the uh, out of the fairy cup. All right. Ah! So, yeah. So, so the interior of the shrine is one large hollow room. Just inside the entrance is a clear pool of water that ranges in depth from two to five feet. Phosphorescent fungi illuminate the pool with soft, dreamy hues. Short, frog-like humanoids of different colors are fussing with the fungi and tossing flower petals into the pool. At the back of the shrine is an elevated semicircular basin of water 10 feet high. Wallowing in the basin is a grung with gold skin. On its brow rests a golden circlet. An orange-skinned grung perches nearby, short bow at the ready. And the red grung uh, comes inside, bows deeply and just says, and, you know, croaks something in this, you know, sort of frog-like language. And then turns back to you, Winthrop, and in Chelton just says, the great king does not speak anything other than our beautiful tongue, unfortunately. So I have, you know, introduced you and the king will will um, speak through me for you. As it should be for a king of his station. And this, you know, gold hued uh, grung that is wallowing in this pool, you can see just sort of, you know, steps out and sort of uh, lifts his arm and a couple of the attendants at the side rush up and uh, you can see, you know, put a cloak over top of him and just in this loud sort of croaking voice, he just starts spouting off and it you can all sort of tell uh, that he is putting on like a grand performance and speaking just loudly and and you know, you get the sense of what he is saying and he is obviously proclaiming himself and Karuk, Look shocked. Look shocked and odd. And Karuk turns to you and just says, um, this is the great King Groak, and he welcomes you to his uh, temple of Nang Nang, where he will bring forth the god and mate with her and provide our tribe with the greatest of leaders to follow for the future. Um, he is glad you have come to bring offerings to him. And we and have brought offerings to the great king. Dave, get up here. Dave, Dave. No, Dave. Dave Calm and I Dave say runs, you're not. Hmm? I'm Dave not giving him Dave. Yeah, Dave runs runs up to you. Just, yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. The Brontosaurus foot. Ah, yeah. He goes and he collects that. And uh, Kuruk, you know, looks at the other people you have brought and just says, it, it, it appears that some of you are weakened. Is there anything we can offer you in way of aid or assistance? And um, she says that as Dave runs up to you with the, uh, the Brontosaurus foot. My great king, we come requesting aid, but we also have a gift, which we will come to in a moment. We found these travelers wounded in the woods, and we are requesting a safe place for them to regain their strength before they could start out again. I have brought you the foot of the great thunder lizard, the raging thunder lizard that we killed, 
as well as this assortment of wines and cheeses. Uh, give me a persuasion check. Oh, Lord. What With advantage. Like wine. Yeah. Oh! Yeah. Uh, and the red grum relays this message and you see the king, you know, sort of puff up and, you know, his throat, you know, expands and he looks very, very proud and he sends forth some more of these uh, servants and they go and collect these items from you and he just says something to uh, Kruk who, you know, then turns and just says, the great king thanks you for your, your generosity and we'll certainly offer as much hospitality as we can to those in need. And at this point, the orange one next to the king, you can see whispers something in the king's ear and he turns and says something and Karuk just says, um, we would ask in return, perhaps that you would aid us in fighting some of the undead that have been troublesome around our village. They don't uh, respond to our poisons. We've had a terrible time getting rid of them. Oh yes, we can uh, certainly assist with that. We can Walker understand Bow. this conversation. Yeah, I'll um, say, of course, sir, but let me uh, speak with my comrades for we are all equals. And uh, Winthrop doesn't believe that, but we are all equals. And <laughs> turn around and let everyone know what's going on. Quick oh, hunt. Walker! Walker immediately perks up. She's always down for killing undead. Uh, ask ask the king if we can like rest here for about an hour first. Uh, I think yeah, I think we can, but I will ask him. Uh, okay. Sir, great king, we would be glad to take your quest and slay the undead, but we need a short rest before, and then we can take uh, our leave of you and do your task. Give me another persuasion check. I was being honest that time. Yeah, doesn't matter. Yeah, it's how you speak to him. Uh, oh, because he's because <laughs> he's picking up, you know, he's picking up more of your manner rather than your words itself. And you know, Winthrop this is, was trained for this. Oh yeah, and so with that, you know, Karuk translates again, and the king just said, you know, speaks back, and Karuk says, "The great magnificence um, is more than happy to have you." rest outside of the the temple if oh, you, would, we'll, you know we'll bow at that and be of course of course and we'll start going out okay well wait wait, wait wait until we're dismissed i thought that was the dismissal we're we're backing up still facing the king yeah yeah, yeah it, we're it, doing these the, the supplication okay it, it's pretty much a dismissal and so you guys are you know sent back outside and just want to go, you know, around uh, the table. I want everyone to sort of give me a sense of what you would uh, do to aid them in helping to, you know, clear the undead rest after undead trouble after you guys have had your short rest. Like Baka, he'll he'll uh, turn a whole bunch of the undead and you know destroy a bunch of them as well. Um, so uh, Walker, what would what would you do? Uh, find the high point and just start sniping. All right, yeah. and Thorn. Uh, same thing. It, it sounds like we can be in relative safety, and so I can just, with uh, Agonizing Blast Cantrip, which costs me nothing, I can just... Zing, zing, zing. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you guys can fly and float over top of the of this maze wall, and, you know, a lot of these zombies are almost sort of stuck into it as they're, they're trying to sort of climb. Uh, Hollis, what are you doing? Um, this isn't really the job for a bard. I guess I can... Uh... Uh, I guess I can like pass inspirations out and get my hand crossbow out and take some pot shots. Yeah, and Winthrop. Uh, he'll exclaim to um, fuck. I forgot my wife's name. Beatrix. Beatrix. <laughs> wow. Terrible. What is wrong with you? <laughs> Under the icon. Her character is tiny. Oh, now I see it. Uh, <laughs> I'll say to Beatrix, honey, it's just like our honeymoon, and I'll start zooming around, just shooting undead as I go. And I don't want to know what your honeymoon was like. <laughs> <laughs> Beatrix, 
It was very interesting and invigorating. I don't want to know. <laughs> How was it, dear? Oh, uh, I will swoop down and just start chopping up heads. All right, and Valanth, what's she doing? I will fly and use Toll the Dying. Ooh, all the right. Dying. Yeah, so you guys, you know, you spend the better part of the afternoon and, and you, you know, it seems like it's almost an unending horde, but you definitely clear away a large, large amount of them. Can uh, Wanderlust help too? She can. You, she just... You know, following your advice, you're floating around. You just have her drop on top of these uh, zombies and just crush them underfoot. Satisfying. And, and with that, I mean, the Grum, you know, they do their best. They, you know, provide water and, and basic medical aid to uh, the crew that you guys rescued from the airship. And as you guys are, you know, taking a rest and, and looking around, and, and a lot of the, the orange Grum and the green Grum, you can see they're all you know, happy and sort of thrilled and the orange grung that, you know, stood at the, the right hand of the king comes out and through crew comes out and thanks you. Uh, and he, you know, lets you know that he is in charge of sort of the militia and the armies here and you have saved them a great deal of time and energy, you know, at least fending off uh, the hordes. Can we um, offer to, because we're it's the afternoon now, right? Yep, it's the afternoon. So I, we can say, um, if you would, if you would uh, acquiesce, we could show you some of our techniques this evening. We could teach you about our tactics. He says uh, that would be wonderful. Um, you know, he would he would be happy to uh, discuss and, and you know sort of talk strategy uh, with you. Um, and Hollis is going to lean into uh, Winthrop and uh, in his ear, very specifically, uh, whisper, ask them about Wadumu and find out if he's in any way associated with these people. Oh, so you uh, think that one grung knows them all? Yeah, I was going to ask, That's do you remember the name ask. of his tribe? <laughs> I don't remember the name yeah, of his tribe. We, uh, I have to look it up. Okay, so Hollis looks it up, so once he gets it to me, I'll ask about that. But for now, we'll, um, I guess, man, I'm kind of railroading us here. What do you guys want to do? Well, as you guys are resting, um, yeah, Karuk says, mm, I don't recognize that name. Uh, but during a quiet moment, uh, Karuk... Uh, Greg Gillis. Looks... Uh, to you, Winthrop, and just, you know, quietly asks, does anyone else in your party speak in this tongue? I half understand the tongue, I'd argue, just after being with him, but not really. Uh, so Winthrop is I pretty sure that both Baca and Orlo speak it. Yeah, I right. think you're right. But, um, no, my wife, a few words. Mostly, you know, I love you and things like that. Because uh, Karuk looks over at Hollis and looks back to Winthrop and just says, is that one a performer? <gasps> a professional performer. Ooh. Big plans. And Karuk at this point just says, may I speak plainly? The king... The king believes the ritual to bring down the goddess Nang Nang is a real thing. I believe the ritual will fail, and with that, the king will be incensed and perhaps bring ruin upon us. Winthrop will give him the uh, stereotypical atheist eyes, like, mm-hmm. Um... I I have come up with a plan to perhaps fool the king. Um, I found this, and Karuk brings out a box of what look like paints, and she just says, these are 
magic and I have kept them hidden from the king. I, I plan to use them to paint an image of Nang Nang of such quality that Grok himself would be fooled into thinking it is the real goddess. Um, would one of you perhaps have the skill to use these and perhaps the performer could then convince the king that this image is Nang Nang herself? Um, well, I did, uh, I have been known to draw the odd naughty uh, sketch in my youth. Performance uh, nine. So is that a cartographer, would cartographer's tools work or do we need artist tools? Uh, well, I mean, this is basically a, uh, a paint set that he has given you, so all the tools are there. Me and Baca both have cartography as our, um, I think Baca has it. You can actually open up a sheet and see. Somebody else has cartography besides me, which would be drawing, which is, I think, the closest anyone has. That's, yeah, so that, that could work. I mean, any kind of, uh, you know, there are a different types of, you know, intelligence checks uh, that you would basically use. And, you know, as you bring that up, uh, Beatrix uh, looks at you and just says, that is why the performer would perhaps have the ability to fool the king and convince him otherwise, and then come up with a convincing reason of why Nang Nang must leave, but at least her presence would honor the king and, and bless him in a way. Ah, the old, I'm just not ready f for that just yet. <laughs> Can anyone cast Nang -Nang a, a headache? I can minor illusion. I'm two levels for major minor image or silent image. Yeah, I, I can illusion as well. Minor but... illusion should do this because, right. well, no, it's got to do everyone though, right? Uh, minor illusion is just like a move. Yeah, it's it's a five by five illusion. Uh, it's not like very realistic, but like if you want to, you know, uh, I mean, just like put like a point or something. It's just not. It doesn't move. It's static. Is there enough paints that Winthrop could give it the old college try? Or there's more than enough. enough. And no, there's more than enough. I mean, you. I mean, uh, you know, Krug says, you know, paint the image, and then you know, you could. You guys figure you could probably use other sort of magic or spells and other ways to sort of persuade and impress and make it all seem like it is uh, an actual, you know, event that is going on. And uh, Karuk, you know, offers you uh, the pigments and, you know, says there, there will be some left. And no, it's, uh, it means that Walker can understand, oh, understand all the languages. She can't um, speak it, but she could understand. So she would be able to translate what the king is saying to whoever is trying to fool her. Yeah, I'm going to cast that. Uh, that's, Excellent. I've, I've got a nine in performance, so yeah. that's probably what, 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 me. Once we get a little bit closer to the time, because they're going to last an hour, but yeah, I'm going to cast that. <laughs> Can we yeah. make uh, one request of him? Of um, whom? Of uh, the guy who's this guy that's asking us to paint the image. Uh, Karuk. Karuk. This is some sort of fertility goddess, correct? Uh, Nang Nang is just the goddess of the Grung. It doesn't have to be a fertility goddess. The king just believes he can impregnate her could you <laughs> bring it is not, not entirely sane could you wait, bring us the wait, three sounds... most attractive female grung and we could maybe average so, out a look sorry but don't so frogs have external fertilization but i guess grung do it a little bit different we grung are not grung are, grung are their own thing yeah, yeah um okay so i have I have a um, message. If I could be told specific things to say, perhaps yeah, I but could... You, you can't... Do you speak Chaltian, though? No. Or the Grung language? Yeah, it doesn't Nang speak Nang. No, But if I could be told specific Grung phrases, he could hear them in a female's voice in his head. Mm, while I don't, Hollis mm. is doing his thing. <laughs> so we have a... Performance check to act and another 
performance-ish check to mime Grung being well, translated by a third person? Well, at this point, I would say that uh, Walker would be able to understand the language and hear it and probably uh, have a good chance of repeating it back so mm -hmm. that Valanth could use that as a way of messaging the king. You know, you guys could, it would be, you know, sort of deception checks and things like that. And Karuk at this point also says, um, uh, I also have this and um, offers you a ring. And she just says that uh, this is a ring that helps you humans jump like we do. Oh. So what do you guys think of my drawing? Should the bosom be bigger? Frogs have a bosom. Oh, and he'll look down probably, at the, the, the frog like and that. be like, scratch well, it out. African uh, uh, Does anybody have uh, religious or yeah, religion as a I'm proficiency? Better. Baca does. Um, I do. If I do, I think I might. Too, though. Uh, I really better. Yes. Well, yeah. You guys I give don't. me a. You can give me a religion check. I clicked you. Why didn't you come up? Oh, there, there it is. Eleven. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, you guys are able to help a little bit uh, with Winthrop's uh, painting. So, yeah, I would give you advantage. So you get a 21 with your cartography tools, and you you guys feel pretty confident about that. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm all James Cameron Pretty hot-looking frog. <laughs> yeah, James Cameron proud. Like, you, you'd F that, right? Is that the sort of thing that James Cameron says? He did when he was making Avatar. Ugh. And with that, uh, you guys, you know, have a couple of hours before night falls, and Karuk excitedly goes off to tell the king that tonight is the night of the ritual and and everything they want to do. Um, anything else you guys want to prepare? You guys are all gross. I just want you to know that. You're the one doing the You're painting. You're the one drawing. Yeah, but I'm getting paid for it. It's a commission. Oh, my God. We're not getting paid. There is a ring. Oh, that was for whoever has to have sex with the king. No, that's not how it works. Wrong. No. Nope. That is not how it works. <laughs> All the wrong. Uh, and as you guys sit, uh, you sit with the ring and you realize it is a ring of jumping. And Ooh. you realize that these paints are, in fact, a box of Nolzer's marvelous pigments. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. So they could use, like, for tattoos and things? Beautiful, beautiful tattoos. We could draw back uh, <clears throat> Walker Bow's fur. Really? Nah, it'll grow back on its own. Thank you. <laughs> it really so, hasn't yet, though. That's so, weird. You should be worried. Not yet. helping. There are three pots of uh, the pigments inside this wooden box. And they allow you to create three-dimensional objects by painting them in two dimensions. The paint flows from the brush to form the desired object as you concentrate on its image. And when you complete the painting, the object or terrain feature depicted becomes a real non-magical object. Uh, thus, for example, painting a door on a wall creates an actual door. So you are, you know, you Wiley find, Coyote? Yeah, yeah, so pretty much, so you paint uh, this image of Nang Nang, and it becomes a three-dimensional thing that, you know, so with the painting, you'll be able to, you know, move it around and adjust it to give it the semblance of life and movement. Uh, so, but then with any other spells like Prestidigitation or Minor Illusion or whatever you guys have, you think you can, you know, you'll have to put on a really good show and performance, but you figured that's sort of the way to do it, so... What can everybody right. bring to the table besides like we've got Stonehenge though, right? Little... All right, gentlemen Dang -dang. and ladies. I've drawn it. I can't do anything else. I am not talky good at him. Well, that's what all is anybody? for. That's what I'm here yeah. for. Who all does minor illusion? Is it just the three spellcasters? Uh, yep. Uh, yeah, I, I do it. 
I Could can you cast do Darkness some um, effect spells <laughs> with the minor illusion, like maybe falling rose petals or something? Maybe falling Remember, flies. Minor illusions flies. can't move. Oh, okay. So no flies. I'm, or... I'm two levels away from Silent Image. Silent Image would be perfect for this. If things go really bad, I could cast Darkness. And then I, I could knock him the out. I could, I could knock out the uh, guy and it was like, wow, you were just so good. You passed uh, right out afterwards. You remember, right? 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 That's how they got uh, Magneto out of jail. Thorn, uh, give yeah. me um, give me a wisdom check. Because <laughs> my advice has been so bad. Because um, you're the only one still hey, in there. Hey, look at that! Well, you think casting darkness might be a really impressive way to start everything. Because yeah. you could have the you could have the goddess arrive in pitch darkness and then just be there, or maybe disappear in darkness again when it's time to leave. But probably starting off might be a pretty impressive way to to yeah. get yeah. things going. Yeah. I have a question, DM. Yes. All right. So the friends spell. Yep. If I subtle spell that, are they still aware they've been charmed? And are they aware they were charmed by me, if so? I believe so, because I think that kicks in at the end of it, not at the beginning. Yeah, friends is a spell that you cast against friends that you don't like very much. <laughs> yeah, it's when the spell ends, they realize they've been charmed. So subtly casting it won't affect that. They may not know who did it, but they still know they were charmed. Oh yeah. Um, so as uh, as Winthrop is, or as as yeah, Ian's saying, uh, there are grung here with musical instruments, right? Uh, you've seen a couple, but they're very simple things, just like you know, sort of drums and stuff like that. But definitely, there are some, and you figure that would that could be used as part of tonight's performance. Yeah, traditional music up. would help. He would uh, really respond to that. All right, I think we got a production going here. So, looking at the darkness spell, I think, well, I guess it's Patrick's call. I think I can end it when I want. It says up to 10 minutes. Yeah, you end it when you want. It's it's like concentrating. Yeah. Um, I would like to spend the time for, while we're waiting for the night learning some simple, like, flirtatious phrases in Grung. <laughs> uh, preferably from whoever the most attractive female grung is. We've uh, collected them already. Well, so I can use the actor. You know, you know. Binders Karak. full of grung. Yeah, Karak, uh, you know, Walker Bow with your Comprehend Languages, Karak uh, gives you some phrases and you understand and you get the nuance from it. Uh, so give me an intelligence check with advantage, please, Walker. No. Oh. I don't really want to learn from Walker though, because I want to learn from someone who's speaking with the correct accent, so I can well, use the actor feet. Yeah. Well, she was she was uh, comprehending, so she, you know, uh, you can do that. You won't get the advantage that you would. So yeah. So give me uh, give me a wisdom check for you. Or, in or intelligence, whichever one you uh, you want to use you, for this. You, you got to do better than that, man. Like, double ones. <laughs> Holy, I got snake eyes. <laughs> All the 20s earlier have now come back to haunt you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what a time. Yeah, you you pick up, you know, Korok, you know, she teaches you a few easy things and says they're, they're flattering. The, you know, the king will certainly... Uh, go with that. Um, and, you know, she looks at Walker and just says, you, you tried very hard, dear, but, you know, it's, <laughs> you, you, you at least will be able to understand the king, which I think will be very helpful. I just start sulking. <laughs> uh, and with that, I will say you guys have had dinner, night is falling, uh, there is incense and torches that are lit inside the temple. Uh, music starts up. You can see that uh, King Groak has been 
uh, ritually sort of washed again. He comes out donning the ceremonial garb made from reeds and wild orchids and uh, cries out a phrase and Walker, you quickly translate it as, you know, he is saying that he is awaiting his love on the steps of his shrine and you can see he is wringing his rubbery hands, you know, sort of antis in anticipation. Uh, so you guys are all outside. He is now Move you guys away. Uh, who is making skill checks here? Because three of you are getting a D8. Uh, I think I'm making skill checks, right? Yeah, w Walker Bow, like, she won't repeat what she hears the king saying, but you can see her kind of cringe. This will be like, oh, oh god, oh god, no. Well, no <laughs> I don't want to be hearing this. She needs to repeat it to uh, the rest of her party. Uh... All right. And the guy's being gross. This is what he's saying. Oh, what's he saying? I know what he's saying. <laughs> not in he's Grung. Saying he's saying it in Grung. Uh, yeah, not Chalton. But, what's he oh, saying? Yeah, I've... Gross things about how he's awaiting for his love. I don't Aww. want to be the translator anymore, guys. That's romantic. Well, and you have think to be, about the starving people. Like, we have to get to and... three people. And you, Walker, you then hear, you know, Korak start sort of incanting and starting what, you know, clearly uh, is meant to be a ritual uh, to, you know, get everything started and to sort of call down from the heavens. And yeah. with that, how do you guys want to begin? Seduce the frog. I so, have... <laughs> so we can start with darkness, but of course... The king will be plunged into darkness and see nothing, and so I'll need to dispel yeah. that the instant. Uh, okay, so uh, I'm going to suggest that we start with like a couple of minor illusions, you know, just some like uh, some some faint uh, some faint chiming, uh, maybe a little little hazy smoke. We also yeah. probably would have stood in a group so we're not yelling over a whole courtyard while this guy's trying to get his piece in the hey! courtyard. Act one, go. <laughs> uh, how, how many phrases did I learn? Uh, you learned three good phrases. Uh, so with that, you guys cast Minor Illusion. You guys have some sounds. You guys have some sights. Uh, darkness descends and just sort of drops the front of the temple. Uh, and you can hear just sort of a couple of the grung along the outside edges just sort of ooh and ah and cry. And <laughs> as Thorn casts it away, uh, in front of King Groak, you see uh, Winthrop's painting. And so uh, animating Nang Nang to, to make it, who, who wants to give me a deception check to try and uh, animate uh, this painted figure to uh, convince no, 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 the king no, no. that's real? I got it. Yeah, not Walker. Uh, D8. No, you get a D8. I know. I know. Hang on. Whoever's doing this gets a D8. And tell me Thank what you, you do. Oh, nice. Keep, keep I going. I make it dance. Uh, how am I actually physically controlling this, by the way? Like, am it's I in the room with it? Frog, right? Am I, like, moving it with my arms? Because that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Are we uh, marionetting this? Are we in the ceiling? I, yeah, basically it's like a marionette. <laughs> I'm going to make it to... Uh, Seductive dance. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Seductive dance and use the first one. phrase. All right. So with that, uh, wise er. I'm picturing. And Hollis, scene. how are you? How are you uh, helping out with your performance with this to give him advantage? Uh, okay. So uh, uh, there, there's the deception uh, performance. Uh, okay. So. Um, uh, Minor Illusion, I believe, also ha uh, handles um, sounds and stuff yep. like that, correct? Okay. Yes. So, basically, through the Minor Illusion, uh, over where uh, our fake goddess Nang Nang appears, uh, I am going to be performing some heavenly chimes and, you know, something that sounds otherworldly and yet mysterious. And so, so, uh... I'm, I'm, a theremin? Hmm? A theremin. Basically a theremin, yeah. All right, uh, Valenth, make your, your honeyed words uh, deception roll with advantage. 
I don't know that I need him for advantage because of the actor feat, but here we go. 21. Yeah, and, you know, with that, uh, the king, you know, sort of responds to your your words and just, you know, screams out, you know, my love, I am here, I am waiting for you. Come with me and, you know, join me. And uh, so Walker is, you know, half disgustedly just kind of whispering this in your ear and kind of like, oh, oh. <laughs> making those so noises at the same there. times. <laughs> no uh, hairballs on the carpet. Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, with your, with that in using your actor feet, uh, what do you say to convince the king that you cannot do that, but you, you, you know, worship him back? Um, I, I kind of figured out I would already have like a phrase that I had learned from somebody for that. Okay. What phrase is it? Uh, I will say... I am enamored by you, but it is not yet time. You must wait. For the course of the first full moon! <laughs> uh, no, no timetables. I'm, I'm not giving a timetable. I'm just going to say you must wait until the time is right. All right, give me a roll. Here we go. You get a D8 to this. I'm going to D8 that. D8 that. 22. Good enough. Nice. Yeah, and you you see him fall to his knees and just says, but my love, I have been waiting. My people, we need this. This is for the great of, greater good of all grung. Tell him to follow Winthrop. <laughs> I, and, you know, what can you tell me or give me to, to grant me at least a boon or benefit from you? Before your blessed departure. And with that, uh, you need to give me one final roll. And this can be a uh, deception, intimidation, or persuasion check. And again, uh, Hollis, or how's anybody else helping out with this? You know, Walker, you're translating and yeah. letting him know exactly what we he's, can, he's asking for. We can for. plunge everything into darkness again when appropriate. Uh, uh, All right. Whatever he says, I'm going to make an image appear behind her. Okay. What's the image? Uh, well, we don't know what you're saying yet. What What was the plan? Uh, tell Tell him um, uh, what, when when the tall folk return. Uh, uh, then will be the time uh, of 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 the grung. Really? No timetables. Yeah, I'm leaving that very vague. So when we come back, the king is going to think that... Then we just never come back? So we're the gods now. Why not go I'm with... I'm going to go with something go completely... With God, goddess is always with you, invisible. Uh, I'm going to go with... I, I think the, the way to do this is... Uh, Nostradamus it. Just give vague... Right. A very, I'm going to give a very vague answer that doesn't have any definite... Um, when the swallow shatters the mountain, right? Yeah, something yeah. like that. When the year is prime. <laughs> no, that's Not my that. table. When the sun rises in the west and sets in the east. <laughs> well, no, that's I, impossible. I, I like the swallow when the swallow shatters the mountains on All a dark right. desert highway. Cool wind in my hair, warm smell of Kalidas rising up through the air. There, done. <laughs> you can All check right. out, but you can never. First leave. two lines of Hotel of California. Are you are you doing deception, intimidation, or persuasion? That's deception. Oh. All right. Uh, and what image are you providing, Hollis? Uh, I'm going to provide the image of a long, winding road, um, uh, and and a mysterious building in the distance. All right. Give me a roll. The building. Right. That'll do it. Thing. Yeah, with that, and with that uh, thorn again, you plunge everything into darkness and wait a few moments and then bring it back up. And what you see is an elated King Groak who turns and just says, Did you hear that, my people? As Walker translates for you, the goddess has 
promise to come back for me and then we will share our love when the time has come it will be the time of the grung and the rest of the grung just sort of erupt in cheering uh and uh you know Gorok basically just says tonight we celebrate and you know rushes back inside the temple and uh you can see Karuk, you know look over at you guys and give you sort of the equivalent of a grung thumbs up uh, but the rest of the night is spent in celebration uh, with uh, the rest of the crew you guys rescued, all of the grung. You're very careful not to touch any of them uh, yeah. because they are all highly poisonous and they know this, but they all sort of want to come up and, you know, cheer and high five you guys and uh, rub all over us. Oh, and high five. Moment, Dave. got gloves on. I'm going to keep Dave in front of me. They got to high five Dave. Uh, Walker Bow is looking very Dave. uncomfortable Winthrop? and just keeps rubbing at her ears to try and get all of the gross out of them. She's like, no, why did I hear that? Ow, ow, out of my brain. Listen, it's it's perfectly natural. Hollis has something that can probably it, help though. you with that. Uh, I have a question. Yes. Um, are the rest of the grung in on the uh, illusion? No. So, presumably they all rolled. So both. they're all... <laughs> yeah, I mean, this was well, a plan that Kurok and probably some of her her other uh, people handled. But for the most part, no, you don't think that all the other grung were involved. So you guys, you know, we're doing this, uh, you know, sort of, you know, as subterfuge. Uh, Rourke at one point comes up and has, you know, a really uh, good conversation through uh, Kurok with Beatrix and Winthrop and... Thorn and you guys are able to give some solid tactics uh, for dealing with the zombies. And you guys spend the night that way. Uh, you end up uh, crashing and sleeping some point in the night. Uh, you awake, you know, in the morning. You're you're given, uh, you know, as as good a meal as as they can provide you. It's it's. You know, there are some sort of bugs and grubs and things like that that, you know, Winthrop happily, uh, you know, shows you how to eat and... Try those know. black eggs. They bury them in the ground for like a thousand years. They're delicious. Okay. And with that, you guys take off. You fly. Um, can I get two D20 rolls, please? Uh... Oh, floating off from uh, yeah, uh, Thorn and uh, Winthrop. Can you give me d twenty rolls, please? So our uh, uh, our our hapless airship crew is uh, safe and mostly sound in uh, the Grung Village. They are. The king has promised to bring them back to health, and then you know send word uh to either kirsabal or somewhere else to you know help them recover or at least get back safely up to one of the rivers um i will say you guys leave them one of your canoes uh as a way for them to get back to civilization and, and again uh do they implement our uh our suggestions as we're going yes and you know eku also says that you know uh once she perhaps delivers you guys to Omu, she may, you know, come back and try and lead these guys back to Port Nyanzaru safely if if you guys no longer need her, because that will end her contract with you. And uh, yeah. with those, uh, the weather, you know, it remains sort of misty and rainy, uh, but you guys are able to fly through the day and continue heading southwards. And, you know, you again catch more you know gigantic uh dinosaurs rumbling through the the jungle and crashing through trees you guys see some stegosauruses uh you see one uh gigantosaur a couple more t-rexes but you're you're flying over them and at the end of the day uh you guys as you're flying you all of a sudden drop about 15 feet in the air and then almost start coasting but you can feel uh your ability to fly is running out um, you guys quickly sort of scout around you can see there's a giant valley to your south uh, just sort of directly in front of you and 
Eku tells you that that is where Omu is, and you're probably about half a day away. Um, but you'll have to finish up on the ground. Oh, before we would have left, given everything that happened with with uh, Walker, I, I'm going to ask, so that um, ship hand that walked down and disappeared, um, mm -hmm. did they have a dog? No. Did he? And but... I'm going to describe the body of the person that was killed they say yes that that sounds like frederick that 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 definitely does sound like him oh um i'm but sorry but he had no dog oh um well i'm sorry to tell you that he has passed we have his ashes here and we plan on um resurrecting yeah, no. him once the soulmonger is uh defeated and they they happily take the ashes and give yourself inspiration for that. Oh, thank you! Oh, I got an inspiration. So Wait, so I missed something. Who who is that kid? That was the boy uh, you found uh, with the bag of wasps on his head. Yeah, yeah. So the, it wasn't the, the it, he was the, the he was the cabin boy, and yeah. he he left after they crashed to try and oh, find help. Oh, oh, I see. But he didn't but have he a dog. No dog. Oh, this is like a spooky story. With a dog. With a dog. It's a dog dog. So yeah, we'll and... replace my garbage can as we go. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Uh, as you guys, you know, so you can feel you're you're losing the ability to fly. Uh, you do manage to, uh, you know, find a decent enough sort of clearing to to land, and you get the sense that probably by the end of of the night now, um, the spell is worn off, but it has certainly helped you guys traverse a long, long way into the jungle. Uh, Eku suggests that you guys do at least a uh, a small, um, you know, search for food and try and uh, you know recover what food and water you guys can uh, before you guys make the next sort of trek. Because once you're inside the city, it's going to be harder to forage for any kind of berries. Um, so who wants to go out and give me survival checks? I will. I will. I have zero. Nah. -uh. Yeah, so yeah, Winthrop, you're able to uh, find some food and same with Beatrix. And Beatrix, as you are uh, looking you know through you come upon an area that's thick with sort of branches of vibrant trees and they're kind of in your way of some of the bushes and would need to be chopped uh and so as you're looking at this and sort of looking at your sword and and looking to start chopping uh, a beautiful woman made of wood steps from behind mm -hmm. one of the trees oh. and she says please please don't you mustn't harm my trees the undead hordes have done so much damage to my kind have have mercy upon us Oh, absolutely. That is, that is fine. I am so sorry, ma'am. Um, uh, I'm Beatrix. What is your name? I am the Wimba Bride. The Wimba Bride. How nice to meet you. Um, you recognize Wimba as a type of tree. And she just says, it is a pleasure having you in our forest lands, as long as you do not do too much destruction. Um, and she, you know, sees that you were, you know, going for some of the food and she hands you some of the berries and then just says, I can also show you to some uh, riot root that will give you strength if oh, you wish. That sounds excellent. Insight check. <laughs> <laughs> I can also help you to some strychnine berries. That'll really help you out. <laughs> She oh. seems genuine, and she does uh, sort of show you around, and she shows you to the same type of tree that Echo has pointed out in the past that is the Riath root. And you know that, yeah, eating some of it definitely sort of gives you strength and makes you feel better, but eating too much of it uh, makes you feel, you know, ill and sick. Oh, so like right, steroids, okay. Or caffeine. Or, or caffeine, yeah. Uh, it gives you... Uh, 
yeah, I mean, you're basically told it'll it'll sort of increase your vitality, so it, it gives you uh, temporary hit points. Are we chewing coca leaves? Well, you have been. Yeah, this whole time. Yeah, and so yeah, she, she shows you, uh, you, you're able to collect uh, three of these roots, and so, yeah, so you know that ingesting that will give you some temporary hit points. So you have three Riath roots. Okay, so I have three Riath roots, all right. But we need yeah. food. Uh, and, you know, she did also, you know, provide you with the, uh, the berries that you were looking at that you didn't hack your way through. Uh, and with that, she, you know, wishes you good luck and, and says she must go off in 10 more parts of her forest, but perhaps she will see you again later. Perhaps, oh, I'll ask about the dog. So she, I'll tell her like we've met this do strange dog on our travels and if she knows anything about it. She shakes her head and just says, there are many strange beasts in, in, these, uh, in these jungles, but I don't specifically know anything about a dog. I will keep an eye out for it, though, and ask my brothers and sisters if, if they know anything, and I will find you uh, in a little bit. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. And I bow to her. And she, she disappears and, you know, blends almost immediately back into the jungle and, and wanders off. Do you head back to camp? Yes. All right, so with that, uh, yeah, Winthrop, you've managed to find a bunch of food. You guys sort of collect everything back. Uh, you set up your, your rain traps. Dave cooks you your meal. Everybody else has their foods. Uh, Eku, you know, sits around. You guys are all sort of laughing and reminiscing about what happened at Dungralung. And just as you guys are, you know, sitting down, um, Beatrix, you again see that, uh, the Wimba Bride is, you know, sort of timidly standing at the edge of your uh, clearing, just sort of, you know, right at the edge of the uh, the jungle or the forest. And she's holding a bowl made out of leaves. And she sort of bows her head to you and just says, um, this is uh, a soup made from Tonga leaves. Um, and, you know, it's you know, good for you, and I just wanted to bring it to you as a way of saying thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Do we, Do we all... all hear this strange person coming out of the bush? Or notice you? Uh, you all see it. I mean, you didn't notice, you didn't hear her coming out of the bush. She moved very silently, but you all, you all see it. So you all see this beautiful woman, you know, completely made of wood with a, a bowl, you know, made out of leaves, and you're just sort of nodding, and she hands this, uh, off to Stephanie, and you can see that, you know, inside is, um, you know, sort of a dark uh, herbal smelling uh, broth. Oh, uh, do, do I know if this gives me any um, diarrhea, magical powers, <laughs> or diarrhea, you know. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna jump up as she appears. Honey, it's okay. With a weapon. it's okay, it's okay, she's a friend, she's a friend, and I'll introduce her to the group. Yeah, and she reaches out and just sort of, you know, scritches the head of uh, peaches. And she just says, I just wanted to thank your friend here for not damaging any of our, you know, plants or trees, you know, in order to sustain yourselves. I, I take that as a very great thing and just wanted to share with you a, a small, you know, um, broth of... Uh, this you know tonga leaf soup it's you know it will just give you it will relax you and help bring pleasant dreams to you oh thank you so much and you know she uh you know sort of shows you how to fold over a small leaf and just sort of dip it in and and uh you see her you know sort of drink it and so she all just says you know this is this is how we 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 do, and she hands out little leaves to everybody. And again, she uh, <laughs> she you know she she looks at you, Winthrop, and then just you know there's just sort of a a smile on the side of her mouth, and it's like it's okay if if the wood is already dead, but 
Please don't harm <laughs> the living trees. Uh, and so, you know, she dips her leaf and raises it to everybody and just says, to new friends that all look out for each other. To new oh, friends. Oh, that, get, that gets an insight check for me. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, seems genuine to you. She's, you know, it. she seems very pleased that, uh, you know, none of you, you know, did any damage to her woodlands and, you know, are all being fairly respectful. Uh, okay. Uh, Hollis um, presumably shares in the soup. All right. Is everybody else? Yep. No. Yep. Yep. Who said no? I did. All right. All right. We'll let Valance save us. All right. Uh, everybody who has the soup, can you give me a constitution save? Yes. Please? There right. it is. Uh, I knew this was coming, but I keep going. Ha ha! I knew I'd survive. Ha ha! Uh, oh, I'm you, down. You are all stunned and oh, just kind of damn. blasted onto your backs. Uh, and as this happens, pleasant uh, dreams, motherfuckers. <laughs> uh, Valanth, uh, roll me some initiative. <laughs> okay. Save us. You know that lich that uh, you didn't meet? All right, that's good at least. Uh, didn't Winthrop make it too? No, we all failed. You guys all failed. Oh, oh shit, eight. that high. And After an 18, God. I didn't save? Damn it. Uh, hang on you don't have second. Indomitable yet either, do you? GPK. Mm, I don't think so. Wait a minute. Is this, is this versus magic or versus poison? Um, neither. Okay. I mean, it's it's closer to uh, magic, but uh, not quite. Oh wait, no, sorry. Well, they get it against both, don't they? Yeah, no, no, that's sorry. It's poison. Yeah, uh, yeah, no, sorry. I'm 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 thinking gnome cunning, but that's only uh, intelligence, wisdom, or charisma saves. All right, never mind. We could just end it right there till next week. <laughs> yeah, but then uh, I won't be here. Uh, oh, no. Yeah, this isn't going to take long. I just need to find the right <laughs> token. No, no, just because, I mean, it's it's not that kind of thing. Uh, oh, this oh. isn't going to take long. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't it, it doesn't matter anyway. Uh, so, Valanth, I'll say you get to, you, you get an action. You have this wooden woman who is in front of you. What do you want to do? Well, what do you I'm do? I'm going to look at her woman. in the eyes. <laughs> And I'm going to say, climb to the top of the mountains. And I'm going to cast Suggestion. Okay. Maybe not. What's your DC? Uh, 15. So Wisdom save. Oh, she automatically makes anything over 25. Wow, this creature, she looks at you and just sort of smiles and just says, be seeing you soon. And as she is about to leave, uh, she reaches down uh, and uh, rips out uh, some of uh, Beatrix's hair and then turns, you know, not quite invisible, but just seems to sort of mist or dissolve into what you would think is sort of an ethereal uh, state. And spelling. Damn it, it was her! It's not a spell. <sighs> oh, ho. And she just vanishes from your sight. Uh, those of you who are on the ground, yeah. uh, you all in your head uh, still see uh, this Wimba Bride standing over you, uh, but her form changes. And instead, you see an old hag with gold coins over her eyes and ants crawling out of her skull. Jesus Christ, I was so nice! I was uh, fucking nice. <laughs> and these ants crawl down her arm and, you know, down her body and start crawling all over top of you. Oh, God. And they watch as this, as the hag drills a hole into your head. Oh, no. God. And the widow's ants march from her body into the freshly drilled hole in your skull. <laughs> oh, oh, Jesus oh, Christ. <laughs> And this only lasts for a right. few minutes, and you all wake 
you know, with a start and you're all sort of sweating and scream. terrified. And it feels very real, but Beatrix, you are the only one that has a lock of hair that is, has been sort of torn out. What do you guys want to do? Hunt Scream. her down. So does that count as a long rest? Okay. Do I know? I'm, I'm tracker a character. I know what kind of hag this is. Do I know what kind of hag this is in character? Uh, give me uh, an arcana check. Yeah, it's me too. I'm just like, I know what hag this is as, as a player. Yeah, Cause... you you recognize that this is uh, a night hag. Oh. So do I know we can't oh. really follow? Oh. What did Sorry, she do? do you did know she... that we can't really follow it because it, you know, went to a different plane. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you know that. Did she steal our souls? Then Just you all know, but she's going to be following, following us. us around, and we can't we... do anything about it. Wait, so we have a list already following us. Okay, if you know what she is, we can research her habits and we can hunt her down. We can't follow her right this second, but hey, where do night hags live? We can find areas like that. I want this <clears throat> done. I want to take her down. Arr, so frustrated. Like my, my hair is standing on end, my whiskers are out, and I just start, start hissing and spitting in agitation. Skah! Wait, she has Beatrix's hair. Yes, what if and we my just, hair as well. What if we just shaved off their hair? Then all that hair isn't connected anymore, and you grow new hair. That is, sure that's, that's not, not how, how that, that works. works. That's yeah. not how any what of this works. What we could do is to cut off other people's hair. Nope. Shave everyone so that anyone else can't have their hair taken. But I fear that might incite worse things being taken. Well, that and you'd have to look at me hairless. Yeah, hairless, a uh, hairless tabaxi. No. Yeah. Well, you don't matter at this point. Hey. Excuse you. <laughs> no, I mean, like, you know what I mean. You, she, she already has your hair. Not Stop racist. arguing with the chipacabras. Don't that's, touch my fucking hair. That's why I'm saying, like, she's got two of us now. She's obviously about, has a vendetta against us. We can't just okay. go about our merry way at this point. Not anymore. sure it matters. Can right? anyone see invisibility here? No, I think we have I to leave see. Beatrix and Walker here. No, I can Get see. Can anyone in this darkness. group see invisibility at all? Uh, I don't think so. No. We're a great group. We're in a horrible death jungle. Of course this stuff's going to happen to us. I think I have fairy fire. <laughs> That's not invisibility. <laughs> uh, <laughs> technically, it might. Yeah, it would It help. might solve the... Uh, Obviously, if, if a night hag disappears onto a different plane, it's not going to help. But if we sense her, I don't think around. any of us can even learn see invisibility. Yeah. Nope. No, I could, but it would be a horrible waste. All right. Well, we're all thoroughly that, that, You guys, you know, spend a restless night. You do get your sleep. But it is, you know, full of terrible, terrible dreams. And, you know, there comes a point in the evening where you guys, you know, sort of trade off on watches and, you know, shudder to each other and, you know, let everyone know that, yeah, you're okay. But, you know, it, it certainly was a, an experience that you are not willing or wanting to you know, relive any time in the near future. <laughs> uh, but morning comes and you guys are, you know, trekking out of your camp and you come across what appears to be uh, a small temple. And, you know, at one point, which was probably something like an open courtyard. And as you guys are stepping out into this, uh, from within the jungle, you start to hear the sounds of running feet and movement. And as you step out onto the flagstones, they crumble and collapse beneath you. And 
you find yourselves in uh, an underground room with a collapsed wall down to your south. And inside this room is where we will leave it for the uh, evening and pick up tomorrow morning. I see no room. Tomorrow I afternoon. Did. We're kind of in what like time? The, we're in like the bottom right. One o'clock tomorrow. One o'clock uh -huh. tomorrow. Okay. Cool beans. Yay! Yeah, we can't lose Dave. He does have abilities. Oh, there we are. There's Cooking yes. abilities. Well, and others. <sighs> Fucking hags. Though. Salome. Yeah. God damn it. We will. As soon as he said it, as soon as he said it wasn't a spell, I figured out what it was. Because there's one in Curse of Strahd. Yeah, we're, we're, we need to hunt her down. We need to figure out how to hunt her. Like, I understand well, we can't go after can, her now, but so we need to scary. figure this out. You don't say anything Night more about Curse of Strahd, Brendan. You have to finish up that campaign with us. Uh, I don't think that, that campaign's probably not going to finish. <laughs> that one's dead. Sadly. However, there is, there is, there is new other Wednesday game. All right. The Awning Portal 1, is that starting next week? No, that's Kazgar. We're going to do it two weeks from now. Okay, let me know. Cool. I'm in. I'm in! Woo! Well, thank you, everyone. I hope you guys uh, had fun. So, tonight, uh, oh, for right. experience, you guys have earned... More than of course, I closed my character sheet. Just adding it up. A lot of big numbers. <laughs> we got credit for killing those gorillians, right? Yes. Uh, you guys each earn uh, 1,250 Ooh. experience points. That's good news for me. That's level six. And so for those who were doing... Um, Meat grinder that is thirteen seventy five. Woo! So, how many experience points did we did we earn? Twelve fifty or thirteen seventy five. And you guys got uh, five days downtime and one renown. There is a ring of jumping. <laughs> and the marvelous pigments. So you guys can figure out who gets what. I'm loaded with magic items at this point, I think, compared to everyone else here. I have none. Uh, you know what? I'm going to shut the stream down now. Thanks for joining us this evening, guys. Catch us tomorrow at 1 in the afternoon for a special Good Bye. Friday appearance. Bye-bye. Eastern Daylight Time. What, uh...